I have analyzed Boeing's own data to conclude that the company is taking manufacturing shortcuts on the 787 program that may significantly reduce the airplane safety. This as investigations continue over recent incidents involving other models of Boeing jets. The company is denying claims about a toxic environment of retaliation against employees. America is listening to Fox News. Don't let everyday aches and pains keep you from living your best life. I don't think I really understood what people meant when they talked about pain until I started feeling it myself. Start feeling better every day with Relief Factor, a daily supplement designed to support your body's fight against aches and pains. Not only do I move better without pain, I just feel better. Created by doctors, Relief Factor uses a unique formula of natural ingredients that target four metabolic pathways to address pain. Relief Factor doesn't just mask aches and pains, it helps reduce or even eliminate them. Today, I do the things I love and it doesn't occur to me to think about pain. You can feel the difference all day, every day. Join the over 1 million people who have tried Relief Factor's three-week quick start kit. It's only $19.95 and comes with our feel better or your money back guarantee. Visit relieffactor.com or call 1-800-4-RELIEF. That's 1-800-4-RELIEF. Rough, rough. Uh, look out. It's only me, it's only the Kimmer. 303, look out, it's Pete Davis, sidekick producer and sports raconteur extraordinaire. And the mechanical mangler at the controls, it's Flounder on your humpity hump 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 day. I know the day I was born. Oh, it's all gathered round. Could be some injuries. Kind of a bizarre day in the life of the Kimmer. I'm hoping somebody will pick a fight with me going home, put it that way. Hey, yeah, da, da, da. That's all right. Good. 303. How you doing? Here's a phone number 404 741 1230. 741 1230. All right. So this is Wednesday. It's hump day, right? It's Wednesday. Yes, sir. Oh, Lordy. That's good. That's good. That's excellent and good. Uh, we have many things to talk about. We're, we have sort of a hodgepodge. Every day's a hodgepodge. And frankly, you know, we're not... I keep, you know, I keep forgetting, actually. I, my first radio job was in 1965. And it was uh, a jack of all trades at a daytime radio station. So I signed it on in the, in the morning. Uh, I didn't work full. I worked in the weekends and uh, part-time stuff was in college. But so uh, on weekends, I would go in at 5 o'clock in the morning, sign on, uh, actually turn on the transmitter, take the read. I swear to God, it was a 250-watt radio station. I would turn on the transmitter, take the readings, and sit down, plug everything in, and start the show. And I would play records, and I did the new I had a wire service on the back, and you would clickety-clack, and you had to read the news. I'd do the commercials live on a, on a tape recorder that I had to have, a reel-to-reel tape recorder. And so it wasn't just digital. There was no digital stuff. It was reel-to-reel. So while you're, play, while you're uh, 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 playing stuff on one thing, you're using the tape recorder in one ear of your, of your headphone so you can queue up the stuff that's coming. It was, it was, well, you learned a lot about broadcasting. I'll tell you what, back in those old days. But anyhow, why the hell am I talking about this? I have no idea. Why did I start talking about I this? I don't know. Right, hold on a minute now. Flounder, why, why would I start talking about this? Great. Oh, oh, I know what it was. I know what it was. I was saying, no, no, I got it. I brought, I got it back. What was that? Like eight seconds? Screw you! Everybody go to hell. It's like eight seconds. That's that was pretty like good. Thirty seconds. That was uh, well, what? <laughs> it seemed like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to you maybe. <laughs> I'd like to live in here with us. In this head, anyway. So what I was thinking was, we have kind of a hodgepodge thing, and, and and I do I do tend to get into a thing where I'm and I'm a, I'm a news guy. I've been a news guy for fifty years, basically before long before I was a talk show host, um, and uh, you know all that kind of stuff. So so I tend to I tend to look at things in their news value as the first stuff. But frankly, you know, we do whatever we want because it's freaking radio. And, and by the way, love your phone calls if you want to join us. And we have the YouTube gang bangers out there somewhere. Uh, Flounder's going to keep track of those. Pete might be able to keep track of your YouTube guys. Uh, and again, the phone calls love to have you board. Okay, uh, uh, for example, coming up, we're gonna we have all the newsy stuff, including we got a lot of liberal stuff here of what's going on in our country. And frankly, I think that that may be one of the most important things that we can do as um, as adults and broadcasters is to keep reminding people of what they're not realizing. If they're, they're they may not be seeing this stuff because they're not getting the coverage almost anywhere. And so I, I, we have kind of, I think we have kind of a duty to make sure they keep understanding. Uh, don't forget, here's what's actually going on in your neighborhood. And we got a couple of those examples coming up, including a high school kid who was uh, uh, suspended. 
for asking a question about the word alien, whether it means uh, illegal alien or uh, something alien in the food or whatever, and he got suspended from school. Hey, we'll, we'll, that's coming over in a second. Also, uh, a couple of goofy things, for example, and I get a kick out of this because I'm an old fart, and uh, here's an old fart story. Uh, there was a listing on one of the social media pe- uh, things of the things that old people used to say were perfectly normal in schools. The things that happened in schools, which were perfectly normal 50 years ago, but would be absolutely unbelievable uh, today. Uh, a quick, um, let's see, a quick, let me find one quick here. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, no, that was a nice. Uh, uh, da, 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 here we go. Uh, oh, in elementary school in 1961, when I was sick. My father sent a glass jar containing whiskey and honey and a tablespoon attached for the teacher with instructions on how much to give me because I was sick. Whiskey and honey. <laughs> In school. <laughs> I mean, I love it. I mean, what, hell, I took my 22 to school on my bike for show and tell. Anyway, we'll get to that. Also, nicknames. You ever had, uh, Pete, have you ever had a horrible nickname you just, like some girl gave you you just hated? I'd like a relationship loving nickname. Uh, not one I disliked, one I thought was funny. I, in California, because of my accent, I was called Skeeter. <laughs> Skeeter. <laughs> Skeeter Davis. She thought it. that was a southern name, Skeeter. Uh, oh, so. my. Uh, Flounder, what about you? Did you, you ever have a girlfriend call you a name you just hated? Uh, no, but I had a nickname, Dinger, forever. I mean, to, the, to, <laughs> this, to this day, friends of mine call me Dinger. Well, that, that's like a home run in Dinger. baseball language. Well, what I was mean, that for? My, I inherited it from my brother. He uh, he was in a soccer game his freshman year in high school, and he got kicked in the balls. Ooh. And the entire and the entire uh, audience saw him because ah. that side of the stadium could see exactly what it was. So ah. the entire stadium just goes. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> and so everyone on the team would develop a nickname, and they called him Ding Dong. Oh, my. And then just developed into Dinger. <laughs> and if you knew how many nicknames the nickname Dinger spawned, I can only Lord. imagine, yes. Oh, my God. Well, anyway, there's a pet. A girl has, says her boyfriend's got a pet name for her, and it makes her want to throw up. So, anyway, guys. So, we got, we got weird things like that. In fact, I... I uh, uh, oh, also, have you guys ever gone, uh, Pete? Have you ever? I think I don't know, Flounder. Have you ever traveled out overseas, like a vacation trip or anything? I've Europe never been or? to Europe. I mean, I've been to Mexico, but never um, been. Over. I don't know whether this would apply. Did you uh, at the time? Did you have a cell phone? And did you yes, turn I it lost off with it. texting or anything? I oh, lo- you lost, I lost it? it. Yeah. Oh my God! Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Now, Pete, when you go, you've been overseas. Did you tell people don't text me or don't call me or anything like that? No. Okay, well, we got a story about a guy who wishes he had uh, uh, checked on a couple things beforehand. And my favorite ex-wife, the one who loved me, has done that before, where she said uh, uh, her, her husband and she were going over, doing, going to Italy, whatever, for fun. And she said, don't text me. Don't try to get in touch with me. Just say, oh, I'll be back. But, you know, just let it go. And I'll tell you the reason why here shortly. It was a nightmare. Anyway, uh, 404, uh, 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 741 1230 How's it going? Okay, let's see. What do we got here? A million things. Uh, uh, but that, uh, uh, we, uh, um, meltdowns. We'll talk meltdowns a little bit. Um, and I got, oh, the bingo. Oh, a couple of Facebook things. If you missed it, I did post on fa- on my Facebook page and also YouTube a couple of videos. In fact, last night driving home, I needed gas and I stopped at gas at a little shell station right here, not far from the battery up on Powers Ferry or whatever it is in Terrell Mill uh, intersection. And it was $5 a gallon. <laughs> $4.99.9. Oh, by the way, in fact, I got. I'm going to read this real quick on my phone here. I took a picture of a text I got from our friend Ben, and Ben texted a thing of a picture of President White Trash, and it says Biden logic. My policies are working. In fact, during Trump, your gas tank only held thirty six dollars. Now it holds over ninety dollars. <laughs> I mean, that's how these people think. It's good for you. It's working. The economy's getting better. What do you mean it's getting better? It was four sixty a week ago, and now it's five dollars. Like five dollars. I mean, honestly, I swear to God, I remember nineteen seventy four, seventy five. I was talking to an executive at Shell Oil Company who used to give me free golf at a golf course place. We had him on the air when we talk about gas and oil stuff. And I, remember, I swear to God, I remember saying to him, uh, uh, "Bill, do you actually ever think we will?" Like Europe, we will ever actually have to pay a dollar for a gasoline, a gallon of gallon of gasoline. He said, "Well, you know, it could happen. It could, you know, we might get to a dollar. You know, Europe's got you know two fifty now for a, a liters." And I'm I remember, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that we would ever pay a dollar for gasoline. That's how naive I was when I was thirty years old. God, anyway. 
Uh, 311, 311, 311. Um, also, on oh, the other thing, we're going to play, <laughs> we're going to play Kimmer Bingo. Mark said, <laughs> very funny, Mark. Uh, one of the other videos I put down was a reminiscence through a scrapbook. Uh, my mother kept track of stuff. Good Lord. God bless her. Anyway, both pictures and stuff, and including a picture of me with my buddy, uh, my, one of my best friends ever named Pete, first name Pete. I, won't, I don't want to embarrass him in case he hates me like all my other friends do now because I'm not screaming liberal in the Northeast. Um, anyway, and so when uh, in, uh, with his graduation present, when he got uh, graduated from Hotchkiss Prep School, and it uh, led to the trip and led to the famous Kimmer phrase on the bingo card, no to kiss, no to kiss, and it's because of an important day in history Today, uh, but um, bum, bum. also, in fact, it reminds me of a story that Bortz told about working on the job one time, and we'll get to that too here in a second. So, anyway, you got a whole bunch of stuff. We'll talk about a kid who, I mean, he all he said he asked a question about the word alien, and they threw him out of school. And his parents, thank God, I've called a lawyer. Uh, coming up on 313-404-741-1230. And uh, Founders Funnies, uh, sponsored by uh, Nucky's Hoagies, our good friends with the uh, Subsisters. And we got all coming up, and uh, Pete's Tweets, and Holy Crap at Sports, and a lot, a lot of sports stuff, including President Crime families butting in now on why chicks ought to be getting a lot more to play for the WNBA. Uh, gee, maybe that you get an audience first. Just asking. I don't know. I don't want to be negative or anything. Yeah. 313, look out. Here we go. The Kimmer Show is only live on Extra 106.3 every weekday afternoon on your drive home. University of Texas at Austin getting rid of their diversity, equity, and inclusion department. They laid off all the people who were in that department. So, of course, now the college students are demanding, that, uh, saying it was racist and that it was unfair and they were terminated, marginalized groups, and nobody cares about us anymore in America. Also, not only are protesting against Jewish people, they're now protesting against getting rid of DEI programs because they want DEI because that's now what all the college kids are saying they hate the Jews and they want DEI, inclusion and equity for a program uh, period. Didn't earn it. DEI didn't earn it. The Kimmer Show every afternoon from 3 to 6 p.m. on Extra 106.3 and the Extra app. Hey sandwich lovers, today is your lucky day. There's a whole new way to roll for lunch or dinner delight with Nucky's Hoagies in the Roswell Corners Shopping Center. Now open, Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell is family owned and operated by the subsisters, Stacy and Shannon, whose love language is food and Nucky's Hoagies, their passion. When you bite into a Nucky's Hoagie, you'll taste the difference. The softest hoagie rolls ever, along with hunger quenching sandwich combinations. Make Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell on Woodstock Road your new favorite spot for lunch or dinner. Introducing Sonder Health Plans, your trusted local partner for Medicare Advantage in Georgia. Only in Georgia. With Sonder, you'll get comprehensive coverage that's tailored to your needs. They offer $0 primary care visits, $0 premiums, and access to a wide network of Georgia health care providers. Visit SonderHealthPlans.com now to learn more about their valued-based care that won't break the bank. Or call 888-428-4440. Sonder Health Plans, your doctors, your neighbors neighbors, your friends. Cherokee Run Golf Club is nestled in the rolling hills of Rockdale County and located within the Georgia International Horse Park. Cherokee Run Golf Club was designed by the legendary Arnold Palmer and opened in 1995. Since its opening, golfers from all over the world have played our magnificent course. Through the years, the course has gone through several changes. The latest and greatest is our newly renovated clubhouse. Cherokee Run Golf Club and the City of Conyers staff have been hard at work to make it the greatest it has ever been. Come by for a round today and enjoy our mini Verde Greens, Zoysia Fairways, and 96 strategically placed bunkers. Utilize our practice facility or brush up on your game with a few lessons from our PGA staff. Let us host your tournament or special event in our new clubhouse. Visit us online at CherokeeRunGolfClub.com to book your tee time. That's CherokeeRunGolfClub.com. Make Cherokee Run Golf Club your home course today and experience the thrill of playing the run. 
At the Piedmont Bank, we're proud to be one of Georgia's largest community banks, focusing on serving businesses and the communities they serve. With headquarters right here in Metro Atlanta, our tailored banking expertise and solutions help meet the diverse needs of our customers so they have what it takes to grow, expand, and thrive. It's what elevates us above the rest. Find a location near you at Piedmont.Bank and experience elevated banking for you and your business. The Piedmont Bank. Banking elevated. Member FDIC and Equal Housing lender. No one plans on going to jail, but at A Second Chance Bail Bonds, we believe everyone deserves a second chance. That's the driving force behind everything we do. If you or a loved one has been arrested across town or across the country, you need help now. A Second Chance Bail Bonds works fast, with bondsmen throughout Atlanta to help expedite release within hours. A Second Chance. It's better to know us and not need us than need us and not know us. Call A Second Chance 24-7 at 404-BAIL-OUT. That's 404-BAIL-OUT. Or online at atlbail.com. What companies would you want to work for? Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks which companies are a force for good. Companies like Bank of America, which just earned the prestigious Just Capital 2024 seal. Bank of America is ranked number one in the banking industry and number one for their ongoing commitment to workers, offering best-in-class benefits, including a minimum wage of $25 an hour by 2025. Visit JustCapital.com to learn how a just business is a better business. Furnished by Just Capital. <laughs> All right. Oh, now, wait a minute. Right? Uh, mad. Uh, uh, hey, Kimmer, Pete, and Flounder, how you doing? 318. 2003 on this day, Earl King, the New Orleans blues guitarist, died at the age of 69. Yeah, Earl King wrote the classic song, Come On, Let the Good Times Roll, covered by Jimi Hendrix. Just a little musical thing there from uh, Flynn Flounder. Can repeat and Flounder, how you doing? I'll play a little bit. Yeah, a little bluesy. Okay. No, but, uh, <laughs> now, that's that guy. That's not Jimi Hendrix, right? Because I don't recognize that as Jimmy Hendrix. That's Earl King, no, right? that's Earl King. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The original guy died 69 years old. Our birthday list includes Sean Bean, 65. Uh, Bonamir, is that how you pronounce it? Bon- Boromir? I gave my freaking Bor- frog. Boromir. I got to get to the freaking doctor. Boromir and the Lord of the Rings. Ned Stark and HBO's Game of Thrones. Zeus in the Percy Jackson movies. And it says here, and Ian, the main bad guy in National Treasure. He was also villain 006 in Gold. Than I, but I remember him as the uh, one of the uh, cowardly fake killer guys in Ronin with Robert De Niro uh, yeah. as uh, one of the fake uh, guys. And Sean Bean, great actor, sixty-five. Oh, great so. series called Sharps <laughs> Rifles about the English uh, French wars in Spain. It's really good series. Really cool. Well, I, I, Netflix, I'm guessing some kind of a no. That's old. App, uh, hell, almost PBS. I think. Oh my god. Uh, also, oh, I got to do my phone here now. I got to get my photo, my phone. I put these things together at five o'clock in the morning, and I don't really organize them very well because I don't know where I am. Usually five o'clock in the morning. Uh, let's see. On this day in uh, 2010, George Washington may have never told a lie and did chop down a cherry tree, but he was a sneaky little bastard. George Washington is said to have racked up. $300,000 in late fees for failing to return two library books in Manhattan. The first president of the United States, George Washington, borrowed them from the New York Society Library on East 79th Street in 1789 and never brought them back. Now, the, the head librarian says, nah, we're, we're not actively pursuing the overdue fines, but we'd sure be happy if we were able to get the books back. George Washington's deed had gone unnoticed for almost 150 years and was only discovered in 1934 when an old, if this is from 1789, discovered in 1934 when an old dusty ledger was discovered in the library's basement. And you Pete Davis is holding up an old baseball cover book. Of, yeah. of what's that? Well, that's an oldie there. I checked this out at Columbia Elementary, December 2nd, 1971. Uh, and you still have Some, it. <laughs> somewhere in 1975, I stuck my hand underneath my brother's mattress and pulled it out. <laughs> and I still have it. 53 <laughs> years later, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that, that, five, that would cost you a pretty penny, I'm, bet, I'm uh, betting you on that one. It's got old time how do you play baseball, the old school oh way, with God. photos and everything. It's spikes fantastic. Up, spikes up, sliding oh. into second base. Oh, yeah. Great stuff. <laughs> 
321, Kimmer, Pete, and uh, Falounder. Our 3 o'clock hour brought to you by our First Liberty Building and Loan people. If you need financing to grow your business, please visit firstlibertyga.com. By the way, I just noticed this, and I know this is an ego thing, and it's wrong and stuff like that, but I don't care because what am I what are you going to do to me? Uh, the headphones on this microphone and this thing are a million percent better quality than the headphones over on that microphone thing with the plug-in thing. <clears throat> All right, so then why don't you take those headphones? No, no, it's not the headphones. It's the it's my, it's my I, I, no, okay. My headphones plugged in right here where I am now are perfect. My headphones plugged in over there are not perfect. So uh, it's not the headphones. It's the attachment thing. It's the plug-in it's, thing. Oh, the it's adapter. My plug-in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the quality on this, I'm, I'm really, it's uh, it, it's to, it's way different. I I know that's not a thing, but I just you know I'm in a thing. I had I had a bad I had a thing. I can't all that medical stuff. I canceled it. Told the VA to stick it up their nose, and and the lady says I, I had a whole breakdown, and I've just you know bam. So and uh, the TV thing. Oh my God! All right, one thing, and it was I swear to God, I'll, I'll try not to do this at all. I mean, it's driving me nuts. Okay, I love my new television. Okay, I mean, the quality's great, everything's fine. Except the guy was really rude, and I think I know why. It was a horrible thing. I'd tell you off the air if you want to because it brings up very bad memories. Uh, the guy who set up the stuff, when he finished uh, uh, with the guide thing, uh, uh, he just kind of started walking downstairs and I said, well, am I supposed to follow you? And he said, I'm done. He just walked away. He just walked out. I don't have a guy. I don't have a booklet on how to work it. The guy just te- the guy the guy is about as wide as his freaking stapler. And there's little teeny. Honestly, God, it's all black. And there's no white thing. There's one little white round. Everything else is black. And there's like a little like a little dude do- like a little V doodad carved into the into the thing. And you have to feel for it because you can't see it. You have to feel for it to go forward or something. And so we're, I, I, I'm honest to God. If you want to set if you want to go forward, uh, you know, for thing, it takes like five extra steps. I, 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 the, the new technology, it does not make it better. It makes it worse. It makes it evil. It makes it so you're going freaking crazy. I, I, I'm telling you I, you, I can show you the remote, the, 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 compare the remotes. You can't erase anything anymore. On my remote that I had before, that I've had for 10 years in that freaking place from Comcast, it has a little button that says erase, boom, wham, and it's gone. You can't do that now, boy. You have to go into the infinity, then you have to click over three spaces. Do you want to delete? Yes. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, seriously, now don't tell me, oh, we'll just go to Google. That's not the point. The point is it's worse. The point is I have to do five steps instead of one. So right. don't tell me this modern technology is old fogies like me that are too stupid to, to have fun with it. Bourgeois. It's worse. <laughs> and it's driving me nuts. And I still don't know how to do things. I'm learning. I learned today how to uh, how to go fast forward without going two full days. You know, so I, so I figure by the end of the weekend, I might be able to figure out how to work my TV. <clears throat> Sorry. I mean, seriously, I, I'm telling you, I'm on a whole thing. This, my, my age thing, see, you guys don't get this. Flounder's thing, I'm, he's, I mean, it's over. The guy's lost it. And, and I, for, for you, I, that's true. That's absolutely true. You, don't, you have no idea <laughs> what goes on in the head of someone by, like me over the whole thing that's going on in the world now. Pete, Pete gets it, but he's still halfway between the old thing and the, and the new thing. And I'm out of it. I'm just totally done. I'm so freaking, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm so upset that I can't just sit down and turn on the damn thing and pick a channel and watch it. You you can't even do that. It takes three steps. You have to put in the dials, then you have to hit yes, then you have to hit the thing over there. It's three steps instead of one. Your brain is wired a certain way. Your synapses are firing a certain path. You have to make them go a separate way. And, and to do, you know what? I, have, I, did, I, I am. I'm doing it every stinking day now that I got this new stinking you, system. So I'm making them do it, and it's not working, and I don't like it. And it's the last thing I need in my life right now is to not be able to watch television. 20 years ago, a doctor told me this and says, this, is, this will help you in a very small way, but it'll do other things. How, when you put your pants on, how do you put your pants on? I stand on my left foot, and I put my right foot into my right trouser. And then I stand on my right foot mm-hmm. and put my left foot into my left trouser. Although, these days, I kind of want to be near a wall in case I start to tip over. <laughs> whoa, I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. The- <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, here's the thing. Every other day, do the opposite. I know. I do it with my shoes, too. My, my right shoe do- always goes do it opposite because it trains your brain to I go know. in different ways. I know. I'm not sorry, but it's just I know, I know, I know, I know, I know all that stuff. But I'm telling you, I mean, I've got like nine million things that all of a sudden are coming on me right now, and I don't. I it just you know I. I, I, I <sighs> anyway, and that poor lady today. I mean, I broke down t- entirely. That poor veterans girl. Jesus. Oh, <laughs> three twenty six, and, and it's all coming. I don't know why hell everything's coming up after fifty six years. By the way. And that's where I told her, forget it. I can't take this anymore. 
Anyway, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. This is sad. Jeez. All right, here we go. Here we go. We have Leela on the line. I'm sorry, yeah, Leo, is that what you said? Leela is on the line Leela. from North oh, Carolina. She wanted God. to talk about the school suspension. Well, Leela, I'm so glad you called. Welcome aboard with the Kimber, Pete, and Flounder, and I'm glad for the break where I don't have to think for a minute, and I'll just enjoy <laughs> chatting with you, sweetie. What's going on, baby? What's up? <laughs> hey, Kim. Yeah, we moved up from Atlanta over up to Lexington, and I saw that yesterday, and I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's at Central Davidson High School, and it was an English class, and they were um, supposed to use alien in a sentence and he asked is it about space aliens or illegal aliens and she freaked out saying oh that's offensive to Hispanics <laughs> and he said no that's not what I meant he just he was asking how to use it yeah he said and I did he said I didn't make a statement directed toward anyone I asked a question I was not speaking of Hispanics because everyone from any other country needs green cards <laughs> too and the term illegal alien he says is an actual term I hear on the news confined to the dictionary and I'll add this the word illegal alien is in the law it's the law exactly. they don't say illegal <laughs> newcomer they say alien it's in the law <laughs> Oh, and then, <laughs> so they suspended him. And, oh, by the way, I don't know whether you heard that they uh, one of the kid, one of the. Uh, let me see if we get the thing here now. Uh, this kid, he's I may get some athletic scholarships. He's active in school clubs, track, cross country, uh, and yet, um, let's see, a young man in the class when the, uh, the he said, uh, "Is this like space aliens or illegal aliens and so forth?" One mm -hmm. of the kids in the class took offense to the question and apparently threatened to fight him, prompting the teacher to call the assistant. In principle, his words were deemed to be offensive and disrespectful to classmates who are Hispanic. I mean, and they kicked him out. They brought, and now the family's got a, got a lawyer. I mean, this is outrageous. Oh, oh my God. I, just, I hope they sue him to oblivion. It, it, just, it just made me so mad. And I don't know what the local news said because... Unfortunately, while the local news was on, I was listening to Dagan McDonald on the <laughs> battle on Fox. Yeah. So, but this is just what I've read. But I was just a, just I, appalled uh, by this. I mean, I, when did this when did this become so pervasive? I don't. I, I mean, I can't. I, you know, I, again, I'm I'm at an age where I just don't understand this. This would not even have been. How could someone be offended by saying, "Well, you mean like an illegal alien?" That's the term. And you say, "Oh, well, I'm offended now. You're out of school." Oh my God, my my father and mother, Pete Davis. Your mother would have gone down there and had somebody by the scruff of the neck, uh, probably the assistant Absolutely. principal. I mean, this is outrageous. <laughs> It really is, and I do hope they sue. I uh, really do. I have to. Like a, just ruin his future. Uh, by one little person has his feelings hurt. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, this now he's gonna he's gonna have a charge of racism on his school record. How about getting a nice scholarship, uh, athletic scholarship from some college when he's got a racism charge on his school record? I mean, this is this is offensive in every every possible way. Anyway, thank you, sweetie. I'm, I, I know. I'm so glad you called. Thanks for uh, thanks for chatting with us, and I feel better already just having a nice how, time. How about chat. the racism on the school's part? When he said illegal alien, they just assumed it's Hispanic he's talking about. Well, it was because a Hispanic kid uh, tried, threatened to fight him. But still, but but you're right. I mean, as, e even so, uh, who, who's to say that's the one? He wasn't talking about Hispanics. He said illegal. Anyone can be an illegal yeah. alien. Yeah, and by the way, he should have asked the kid, uh, kid, are you an illegal alien? If he says no, he said, well, I wasn't talking about you. Then shut your mouth and leave me alone. I wasn't talking about you, dickhead. Give me, leave me alone. I mean, get out of here. Get out of my face. How about that? <laughs> you can't say that. Well, I don't, I don't know what I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just. I have an excuse for the rest of the day because I've had the whole thing going on here. <laughs> I'm not my normal self. <laughs> okay, okay, let me let me tell you something that'll make your day. All right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm sitting out on the porch and I see the biggest squirrel I've ever seen climb up a tree. Oh. And so I got the phone out and did the zoom. Yeah. I, to this morning, I've lived 63 years, never knew that groundhogs can climb trees. I saw like that squirrels. groundhog in the tree. I've shot groundhogs my whole teenage years for a friend of the farmer life with my girl Brenda. Uh, I've never seen a groundhog do anything but go underground. I right. saw him in your tree. Scampered. A groundhog. Scampered. <laughs> oh, God. 3.30, give her a and flounder. Look out. <laughs>
Well, not that shocked. The Kimmer is live on your drive home every weekday afternoon from 3 to 6. And now Neil Bortz joins this show every week. And if you miss it, catch up anytime on the Extra 1063 app. You know, I just it's uh, 331. Kimmer, Pete, and Flounder. How's it going? 404 741 1230. I just thought of something. I'm going to talk to my buddies, Jeff and Mark, down there at Atlanta Safe House. They have the show I'm up and act with. You know, I'm going to say, I want you to build me a safe where I can just put myself in and just stay right there. I do everything right there. We don't have to move. Just take care of everything, have all the appliances and all the stuff, but they can do it. They can build you a family storm shelter. Uh, they, <laughs> and I need something to be a lot safer than right now. Atlanta Safe House. Uh, these are great guys. You know, when they deliver your safe to you, they only use off-duty police and firemen and military folks to give them a chance to a little extra money and uh, say thank you for what you do. All the best names. I have bought two safes from Atlanta Safe House. Unfortunately, when I didn't take one down to Florida when I retired, no medical records. And again, today, I, I, I lost my head. I totally broke down and I said, I'm done. And it's because of, of this whole medical thing. And it's just bringing back stuff that's just, I don't uh, laugh, laugh, laugh. So don't be like the camera. Be much better than the camera. And, and by the way, it's not that hard. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, keep your stuff in your safe from Atlanta Safe House. They have all got pistol safes could keep in your car or your trunk instead of putting it under the you know the front seat or something and in case, in case something does happen, at least the gun is safe and uh, you know bad, bad protection for families and stuff like that too. It makes a lot of sense. But it's not that you have business safes and jewelry safes and high security safes. Uh, they can bolt it from inside to your concrete floor of your basement or garage or game room or whatever. These are great folks. A non-woke company protecting you. Protecting me when people are coming after me too, just for the record. These are good folks. Please tell them the Kimber sent you whether you're at their showroom in Ackworth or look them up on the web. AtlantaSafeHouse.com Pack your bags and join the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets football team in Dublin, Ireland as Toby Slather to kick off the 2024 football season in Dublin. The Erlingus College Football Classic will feature your Yellow Jackets versus the Florida State Seminoles in a special Week Zero matchup on August 24, 2024. Don't miss this unique opportunity to visit one of the world's most popular travel destinations while cheering on the Jackets on a global stage. For travel packages, tickets, and more information, go to gt2ireland.com. Sting them. Hey, fans. Xander from Atlanta Painting Company here, and with spring on the horizon, the home team won't be the only ones painting corners in Atlanta. This spring, save 10% off all exterior projects and get a free color consultation. We understand how valuable your home is, so protect your investment with our industry-leading warranty and unmatched customer service. Don't just take our word for it. We have over 900 Google reviews telling you why we are the painters you can trust. Ready to get started? Visit us online at atlantapaintingcompany.com to schedule your free home consultation. The Atlanta Painting Company. Painters you can trust. Lee Brandt Jewelry and Watch Company, where quality and value make the difference. Locally owned and located in Sandy Springs, offering you the finest selection of unique diamonds, sapphires, rubies, and emerald jewelry, as well as other fine gemstones. Lee Brandt Jewelry and Watches has been servicing Rolex watches for over 30 years, and their Rolex-trained watchmaker will service your watch in their state-of-the-art Rolex service center in their store. Lee Brandt uses only genuine Rolex parts, and their estimates are free. Drop by Lee Brandt in the Trader Joe's Shopping Center in Sandy Springs, or visit LeeBrandt.com. Millions of guys suffer from erectile dysfunction. That's one in four men. And I can tell you, I'm one of them. If you or someone you know suffer from ED, Peyronie's disease, or PE, here's 38-year emergency room doctor and founder of Total Body Therapy of Georgia, Dr. Eric Deal. Patients who enter my office are often frustrated, hopeless, depressed, and embarrassed. I understand the problem, and I'm going to help you fix it. There are lots of competitors that don't have the credentials that I have. When you go to other clinics, you're not going to see a board-certified physician with the experience that I have. When you come to our clinic, you're going to see me. There's just not one therapy that can solve these complex issues. I'll do a complete history and physical prior to any treatment that we use. Take it from me, Dr. Deal. When it's not hard, it's really hard. Call Dr. Deal for your free one-on-one evaluation and resolve your ED, peronies, or PE issues. Total Body Therapy of Georgia. 404-777-1911. 404-777-1911. Online at stopmyed.com. Da, 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 da. Kind of a sad day. 1998. Linda McCartney died after a long battle with cancer in Tucson, Arizona. Linda McCartney married Paul in 1969 when she was working as a photographer as well as being a member of Wings. She became an animal rights campaigner and launched her own brand of vegetarian food. Now, is she singing her? Is she on this? No. She, no, she, she, played, deep, she did keyboards, didn't she? 
Deep in the background, she okay. sings because they highlighted her voice once on a microphone, and it's horrible. Yeah, I didn't know that she was actually a vocalist there. And well, there's you know, it's still a sad. It didn't say how old she was, and I forgot. I guess it's rude, but still, it'd be nice to know. She, I think she's like 45 or something, wasn't she? Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, birthday list includes uh, Jan Hammer, or is it Jan? I think it's Jan Hammer, the Jan. composer, uh, 76 years old, the Czechoslovakian composer, did the theme to Miami Vice. Among other things here. And on this day in history, uh, a few uh, Civil War era things all in the same day. 1861, Virginia became the eighth state to secede. In 1864, General Grant refused to allow the trading of prisoners. And then one year later, 1865, Mary Surratt was arrested as a co-conspirator in the Lincoln assassination. And I forgot what happened to her. I forgot to look it up. Did they, did they kill her? Uh, they hung her. They hanged her. Oh, they hung Hey. There's a great movie. Robin Wright stars as her, and I think uh, James McAvoy is in it. I forget the name of it, but it's a great movie. It tells about her and the whole, you know, uh, scenario of her helping yeah, I, or not helping. The film kind of puts it. Maybe she didn't do what they said yeah. she did, but they hung her. Man, well, hanged actually, because if, if, if they say they said you was hung and they was right. <laughs> See, it's slightly He's different. Well, hung. <laughs> so slightly different uh, definition of the word hung and hang. So <laughs> you know, you hang a picture on the wall, and the guy was really you know, it's a totally different. And they erected a scaffold, <laughs> yes, and it they, was some erection. Yes, yeah, it was. <laughs> it's the damnedest thing I ever saw. I know that. <laughs> Three thirty-seven. Kim repeat flounder. <laughs> oh God in heaven. Yada da 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 da. Uh, we got flounder's funnies coming up here. Anytime you want, um, uh, 404 Now, uh, now that, that Carolina, North Carolina case, talked about the kid suspended in high school, Lexington, North Carolina, Central Davison High School, for using for asking the question of whether she was talking about space aliens or illegal aliens. And the teacher said that's offensive. Kid threatened to fight him, and they suspended the kid out of school for three days. Also, North Carolina. I guess this is on video. I have not seen it, and apparently it's posted to social media. Winston-Salem, South Carolina, Parkland High School. A youngster filled with rage, identified only as a minor, confronted his teacher where he slapped her several times and was screaming profanities in the classroom. After the initial slap, the teacher seemed unfazed as the student continued to running his mouth, and the teacher said, do you think that affected me in any way? Sitting back in her chair, the her, the teacher, her chair, with her legs crossed, he says, want me to hit you again? And he approaches her and says, I don't want it. And he answered, then he beat her again, this time from the other side of her face. The second blow knocks her glasses off her face. Um, and he says, what the bland, what the Frank's wrong with you? What are you going to do? Sit still in that chair because you a bitch? Ain't nobody even coming. You got slapped. Singing and dancing. Bitch, go back to teaching. This is what the kid, that's what the kid said. Shooting. Students behind the camera, which filming, of course, instead of stopping him, they all made sure they got the video, uh, reacted to the slapping of the teacher with laughter in the assault. Uh, the district says, well, oh, I, I love this. <laughs> okay. A, a student uh, comes up that beats the crap out of a teacher. Knocks, I mean, I just literally just, to, uh, and dirty words and threatening and stuff like that. Uh, here's what the official thing is. I, uh, let's see. Uh, 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 Superintendent uh, Trisha McMahon has said, uh, uh, this behavior will not be tolerated. At no time is it acceptable for students to put their hands on a teacher in Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools. Uh, well, by God, you're, oh, you've are oh, really cracked down now. Like, uh, you put a real warning to those little bastards, haven't you? Wow, golly, man, that's really fantastic, Trisha. Jeez. So, uh, and here's the other thing. Are you serious? There was a custody order issued for three misdemeanor charges against the kid for assault a government official. One count of communicating threats and two counts of misdemeanor assault. Misdemeanors. Uh, good Lord. Even the, uh, the sheriff says we should all be outraged. Those who educate us could be assaulted. Uh, the school principal warned the student would face disciplinary action, too. Oh, golly, you're really cracking down then. Dear God. 
I can't, Im- I, I literally can't imagine. I, I promise you, if there had been a kid when I was, Pete Flounder, if there had been a kid beating a teacher in class, not only would some of the other students in class try yes. to stop him, yeah. and, like all of us who were in athletics, I guarantee we were considered leaders. We were the guys who can, you know, we, we took care of things. Student council. Oh, I was on the student council. I mean, you know, there were leaders in the school. We wouldn't have put up with that kind of stuff. And someone would have gone to get the assistant principal. Our vice principal would have beat the crap out of him. Uh, he would have been bloodied. Beaten. Yeah, oh my God. We would have beaten him into the hospital. I'm sorry. I said just unbelievable. Again, it's disrespect uh, uh, for uh, not only a teacher's authority. Con- I mean, we're in it. We're in well, it. Well, the kids are scared too if they do something because that sucker will go home, get a gun, and yeah, come back. That's right. Yeah. And again, of course, now uh, everything's cell phone, so they, their first thought is to get it on tape, get it on video. Get in them, and I, I, I'm sure you know. Well, in fact, um, I, 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 all the time, if I'm doing something, and I all of a sudden, I say, oh my god, I better get this. I just, I'm going to capture it on my phone. I fall, you know. You don't even think about it sometimes. So anyway, whatever. My uh, three forty one. Tim repeating flounder. I'm floundering. What's that? <laughs> well, I should have done this one. Just said, got ground. I'll get down out of that tree. You're not a squirrel. You're gonna hurt yourself. <laughs> a matter but with no, you. I just sat there and filmed it. <laughs> well, I, I filmed my getting my gas for five dollars a gallon. For God's sakes, I filmed my. I did you see the picture of me in my stupid little Marine Corps uniform with my glasses on like an idiot? I don't know why they didn't just tell everybody at Book at Paris Island when you're getting your your picture taken for your portrait. Take your stupid glasses off you look like an idiot oh anyway. i did something so st- i've never done ever i got some gas and went over to the grocery store came out put the groceries in got in the car cranked it up and looked and i had left not only the the gas thing undone but the cap out of it oh my oh do you have a, the cap attached or did you lose it? yeah the cap's attached oh, man. i've never done that <laughs> that's scary you must have been distracted I By was. a groundhog or something, I guess probably. No, I dropped I dropped the hose when I was putting it back in. So oh my! Right. Well, that's what she that's said. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> said. The actress to the bishop. Yes. <laughs> uh, holy miracle, Father. <laughs> hey, sister, how much is five dollars, Father? <laughs> <laughs> it puts the <laughs> puts the lotion on its skin unless it gets the hose again. <laughs> <laughs> Three forty-three. <laughs> and speaking of the liberal stuff, I mean, this this was bound to happen. NPR whistleblower Yuri Berliner has now finally said, "Well, I can't do it after all." This was the guy, the longtime NPR editor, who announced that there was something. He said there were we have fifty-eight editors at NPR, and they are all dem- registered Democrats. Every one, okay. We all know the whole 58 thing. Fifty-eight, fifty-eight editors, yeah, and they're all Democrat, registered Democrats. <laughs> How um, many stories do they do a day that they need fifty-eight I, editors? I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I swear to God that I heard him say it. I actually heard him say it. Uh, he blew the whistle on the liberal bias and now uh, and then they suspended him because everybody at, the, at NPR went nuts. And now he says, I'm resigning from NPR, a great American institution, which I've worked for 25 years. I do not support calls to defund NPR. We'll get back to that. I respect the integrity of my colleagues and wish for NPR to thrive into important journalism. Now, here's the important part. But I cannot work in a newsroom where I am disparaged by a new CEO who's de- Divisive views confirm the very problems at NPR I cited in my free press essay. Catherine Meyer, or Meyer is her name, took over last month as president. Uh, he complained about the coverage of Russiagate, the laptop, COVID leak, uh, Hunter Biden, stuff like that, uh, systemic racism, all that kind of stuff. Uh, he showed that uh, the, all the staffers are uh, registered Democrats. One of the NPR's best and most fair-minded journalists said it was good to not cover the Hunter Biden laptop because it would benefit Trump. I mean, they deliberately said, well, no, we can't do that. It'll help Donald Trump. Okay, these are not journalists. This is not public radio. Anyway, he and now he says, I, I can't do it. I, I quit. They, all, they, all, they, all, they were going to stone him. He couldn't work there anymore. I mean, here you are. And by the way, when he, he said, I do not support calls to defund NPR. Too bad. I do. If, if NPR had been set up by some conservative wing in the federal government and they were only doing stories on Hunter Biden's laptop and only doing stories on, on uh, Joe Biden hiding in the basement and being a liar and everything else, they would have been defunded the first five minutes on the radio. And you damn well know it. And again, once again, every single time that there is a major political issue involving uh, uh, some left weird cause, all you have to do is reverse the parties. Pretend that the NPR was run by conservatives. Now ask the question, do you think the Democrats would have defunded NPR? Yes, they would have. Now, therefore, do you think it's fair for Republicans to try to defund NPR because they're bad for the other side? If it's bad for one side, it's bad for the other! 
I mean, th- th- everything they do, they're a bunch of lying phonies because if you change the political party, it would be the exact opposite, which proves they're a bunch of lying phonies who will do anything for the victory. That's how they got him in the office in the first place. Mm. Oh, but, God, please not again. By the way, that movie I was telling you about, The Conspirator, directed by Robert Redford, starring uh, Kevin Klein and Robin Wright and Evan Rachel Wood. Oh, really? It was about Mary, Mary Surratt. It's a very good movie. That's a, what's a, The Conspirator? The Conspirator. Well, I'm going to look for that on my new... Oh, that's right. I have to get the new app. Uh, 346 <laughs> with a Kimber Pete flounder on your hump day. Uh, what's a Wednesday? Oh, my God. All right, I'll settle down. I mean, I know I won't. No, I won't. Yeah. Anyway, here's a little music for Be you. Be happy. Don't try. I'm happy. I'm always happy. Get off my back. Oh, sorry. I mean, please get off my back. Oh, sorry. The Kimmer Show is only live on Extra 106.3 every weekday afternoon on your drive home. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to cry now just thinking about what a what a Oh, you poor ridiculous. baby. You had to go out and upgrade your TV, <laughs> and they're going to come out and do it for you tomorrow so you don't have to go oh, to the stable. Right. Your on. life is Keep hell. going. How about you, Flounder? Bring, give me a little extra pepper on the sauce here. Just a little something extra. Hang on. Right. Make me look I'll, better. I'll just do it throughout the whole show. Jesus, Mary, and Joe. God. The Kimmer Show, every afternoon from 3 to 6 p.m on Extra 106.3 and the Extra app. Hey, Dad, can I ask you something? Sure. How do you know when you're in love? Well, you can't stop thinking about him. Your heart races sometimes, and you just want to be with him every moment of the day. Dad, I think I'm in love then. Got a picture? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yep. I remember my first Subaru, too. There are so many reasons to love a new Subaru. From Subaru of Gwinnett, like standard symmetrical all-wheel drive on most models, top-rated gas mileage, and technology and safety that will give you the warm and fuzzies. Like the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek, with 182 horsepower and up to 120 cubic feet of interior space. Or the 2024 Subaru Outback, built to take you off the beaten path with up to 9.5 inches of ground clearance. Add in their amazing staff and incredible service department, and you'll understand why love is what makes a Subaru a Subaru. But the only way to know it's the one is to come in for a test drive. Subaru of Gwinnett, Satellite Boulevard in Duluth, or start shopping online at SubaruofGwinnett.com. Well, Sally, thank you for your time, but unfortunately we can't offer you the position. But why? Well, we got the results of your background check and we saw some red flags. Like what? Apparently you were accused of dog napping a chihuahua named Mr. Cha-Cha. Mr. Cha-Cha was my soulmate. At Horizon Background Screening, we find things that other companies don't. That's why companies that use us make smarter hiring decisions. Don't let the wrong hire put your company at risk. Get the real story on your candidates at horizonscreening.com. My name is Amy Risley. I have been working for Bruce Hagen for 17 years. When I first started, my boys were four and six. And whenever I needed, Bruce allowed me to bring them to our office. Bruce has always treated us like family. And 17 years later, I still love coming to work for Bruce Hagen. Just recently, a friend told me they hear Bruce talking on 680 The Fan. They asked me if he was as nice as he appeared to be on air. I smiled and without any hesitation answered, he's even nicer in person. I'm Amy Risley. I work for Bruce Hagen. Let Bruce Hagen work for you. Hagen dash Law.com. This is Dan Watkins with All Four Seasons. We've always been Atlanta's best at installing and servicing garage and entry doors, but you would be surprised at how many windows we've installed as well. So we're proud to announce a new division, All Four Seasons Windows. We now have the ability to make sure every opening in your house is safe, energy efficient, and looks darn good. So give us a call today to schedule your free sales consultation. Find out how you can decrease your energy bills and increase the beauty and value of your home with All Four Seasons Garage, Entry Doors, and windows. My name's Jeff Criswell. I'm running for U.S. House of Representatives, Georgia's 6th District. I'm a Republican. I'm very conservative. I'm sort of a middle-of-the-road kind of person, which I think in Georgia District 6 is really going to work to my advantage uh, because it's a very diverse district. You know, if you ask me right now, the big issue is immigration. Also, the cost of living. My goodness. The numbers are crazy. It's so much more expensive now to live, to go buy groceries, to buy gas. We've got to do something about the cost of living. And I believe that all of that is linked to the national debt, which would be my third sort of an issue here. We've got to stop spending money that we don't have. The reason I think people should vote
difficult for me is because I am brand spanking new to this business. I am going to bring a very new perspective to this. Go over to jeffcriswell.com. That's J-E-F-F Criswell, C-R-I-S-W-E-L-L.com. Hit that donate button. Help us out. By all means, we, we want to partner with you because we can win this district. This message is paid for by Jeff for Georgia 6. Yeah, look out. Mm. Uh, that's right, man. Uh, no worry, man. The reggae, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, 1987. 1987, Carlton Barrett, reggae drummer and percussion, uh, percussion player of the Whalers, was shot dead outside his house in Kingston, Jamaica, man. He joined Bob Marley and the Whalers in 1970, wrote the Marley song, War. Uh, Mr. Carlton Barrett was the originator of the one-drop rhythm, a percussive drumming style. I don't know what that one One-drop rhythm. I don't know what that means. Anybody know what that means? One drop. One drop. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know. Your guess is as good as ours. Well, as a former first-chair trombone player in the All-State Band, I don't know what a one-drop drummer is. I'm sorry. I should have looked it up, and uh, again, that's not on my list. That was Flounder's thing, so I, I couldn't Didn't do Didn't do a lot of reggae in high not school. Not too much band, reggae, no, at the prep school. No, it was not the... <laughs> <laughs> 352. <laughs> Yeah, let's see here. Oh, our uh, birthday list includes the uh, lovely Victoria Beckham. Posh Spice is 50 today. Okay. 50, God. Oh, it's going to be 50 again. <laughs> hey, look what I just found. <laughs> What'd you find? I uh, found a Nassau steel Bahamas. drum. Oh, my God. It's a steel drum the- from the Bahamas. It's like when uh, when Michael Scott came back from a Jamaica vacation with Jan and he brought back a drum and dun, dun, dun. That's all I could play with dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you need a particular drumstick, though. Yeah, you have yeah, to have a special drumstick. I lost the drumstick. Wooden stick. thing. You know, I have in my house, in fact, I could take pictures of them for you. I have in my house right next to where I did the video this morning of um, of um, me with the, the Mustang story and my friend who I got the Mustang story, which I'll talk about later on. And right next to that, where I, d- I took the video this morning down in my uh, uh, game room place, place, my storage place, are the set of drumsticks which I made on a wood lathe in eighth grade. And I still have them, drumsticks, like I would need drumsticks for anything. And I made them in wood shop in eighth grade, uh, which was where the boys went and the girls went to home ec and typing. And the boys went to wood shop and I made those drumsticks. I made a bunch. I made a bunch of, uh, I made a clothes stand or uh, uh, what do you call it? A coat rack, a coat rack, standing coat rack. And a couple things from my mother. <laughs> oh, this is lovely, dear. <laughs> Put it in the living room, dude. Yeah, you? put it right up there. <laughs> Let me put it over here where you come in the entrance to the garage because we can put them right there when you walk in, you know, and nobody can miss it. You no know, kind of a. I mean, but seriously, you know, uh, God bless him. Oh, Lord. Why am I having all these fun, goofy memories, man? I guess, uh, I guess, well, I guess we can figure that out. Uh, and on this day in history, in 1790, Benjamin Franklin died in Philadelphia. He was 84. His wise words of the day, Ben Franklin, quote, If you would not be forgotten as soon as you are dead and rotten, either write things worth reading or do things worth the writing. Either do things worth reading or do things worth the writing, if you would not be forgotten when you're dead and rotten. Okay, well, that makes sense. Of course, that's nothing I'll ever accomplish, so... (laughs) They're not going to be naming any schools after the camera. I know that. If uh, you say one more negative thing, <laughs> I'm going to spank you, young I, man. I know it's just, I'm just, you know, it's just, uh, honestly, I'm ready to just flip. You're on the radio. You're having a good time. Enjoy. I'm having a great time. I, I, this, this is my happy spot. This is the, the, the most fun I can be is three to six. I mean, you know, the eight hours and before that are, 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 are tragic, but the three, three to six, I love, I love kind of sitting down here and, okay, let's go. Let's have fun. Let's go play. In fact, we got to do a Flounder's Funny. My God, man. We, you guys have to do a better job because I'm, I'm losing everything, so you have to have to make sure I do stuff like this. Uh, and by, In fact, coming up, you're going to hear, do you know the guy John Legozamo, or how you pronounce it? They call him a comedian, but he's a, a, well, a really well-known actor. He's also a, a jerk, uh, but we're going to play his thing in a second. Flounder, have you got a little funny in there we can do uh, while we're thinking of it? We sure do. Okay, dokey. We'll do a little something here. Three fifty-five, exactly. Boom, bang. Right now. Well, now it's three fifty-five. I realized something earlier as uh, I'm getting older, which is uh, which is fine. I'm at I'm at that point where I realize uh, I might need glasses uh, for reading. 
You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so I had to make the hard decision, you know, to uh, stop reading. <laughs> yeah, I got colors and shapes down. I'm pretty good. I have the basics. Good. I'm cool with getting older. I knew I was getting older when I started rooting against the kids in scary movies. <laughs> <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Remember how you watch Friday the 13th, Halloween, teenagers do something stupid or rebellious, but you still want them to make it, you want them to live. You're like, run in the barn, he's coming, run in the barn! <laughs> now I'm like, your mom and dad told you not to leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> It's a school night. You're being disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that, Flounder? I like that That guy. is Ty Barnett. Ty Burnett. A uh, very funny guy. Uh, 356 with the Kimber Pete and Flounder. We got, we'll talk about some Trump stuff and this liberal comedian come up here some, after the top of the hour. Also, uh, President Stupid Face is getting involved in the female WNBA salary situation. I mean, this 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 Caitlin Clark girl is going to make $3 million in uh, personal endorsement type stuff, and uh, she's going to make $75,000 as a WNBA player, which is about right. I mean, it's not, you know, if more people watch and more people wanted to buy commercials on TV stations that showed them playing, then everybody would get more money. But they don't, and so it's marketplace to economics, and that's the way it ought to be. So you can't step it's, in and say, well, we got to start paying the girls more. Well, no, you don't. It's a non-profitable company. Yeah, they haven't yeah, made a they profit need bailouts since its anyway. inception. They have revenue sharing and all that, because it's not a, it's not a, a business that's going to be successful. Anyway. I'm surprised that it's lasted this long, so I give them credit for that. Yeah. And they're, they're, this will get a bump. She'll give them a bump. I don't know how big it'll be, though. Well, I, I think without question, they're they're bragging, saying, "Oh, all of a sudden we have two million followers. All can't wait to we're going to sell out all the arenas." Yeah, for, for probably the first I, four days and uh, four. I can't watch it. No, I, I just cannot not, watch it. Yeah. Now I do enjoy watching her because she's a pretty. She's a good athlete. I mean, she does. She makes moves. She makes a basket. But again, I can't. I, I've watched thirty seconds of highlights and I'm done. I, I could no way would I watch a women's basketball game i'm sorry I, I, or I, i'm sorry it's just like i'm just not it doesn't appeal to me don't you know i'm that's not sexist i just don't want to watch it right? 357 oh how about this we heard about the loss of what, what an, these people in, they're asking for it the mayor of los angeles karen bass is now pleading with the rest of the people left who are still rich in los angeles anybody with any money still left in los angeles she wants them now to start paying to fund the homeless housing crisis we will not hide people we will do as we will house people the crisis on our streets is nothing less than a disaster we need strategy in a system right now we're working to move past nightly rentals we're asking the most fortunate angelinos to participate in this effort with personal private sector and philanthropic funds to help us acquire more properties, lower the cost of capital, and speed up housing. This is the mission of our new capital campaign, LA4LA. This city can't accept this crisis. The humanity and generosity of the private sector who needs to save us. And she complains about a crisis. And says, you asked for it. You Democrats asked for it. And California is still a sanctuary state. So kiss my foot. Your governor says you're still a sanctuary state and you're still a sanctuary city. So go blow b bubbles. I mean, seriously, who, who the hell are these people? They don't, they, and again, the kill, what's killing me, they don't want to stop the problem. They don't want to stop the people coming in. They want to get more money to take care of more people coming in. If you really cared about the problem, Mayor, you'd stop the problem. They, instead of having a hole in your pocket draining all the money, instead of closing up the hole, they want to add more money so there's still more money coming in. Holy cow, what's the matter with these people? I mean, seriously. Well, you're voting for them. Oh, my God. All right, almost 4 o'clock. Notice the happiness and the laughing. And the, 4 o'clock with a Kimber Pete and Flounder. It's a 4 o'clock. Oh, my God. It's like humanity. Uh... WFOM and W292EV Marietta, a Dickey Broadcasting Station. This hour is presented by Atlanta Safe House. One hour.
article of impeachment is dismissed on Lisa Brady, Fox News. That Senate vote along party lines a short time ago after debate on several motions, including an effort to go into a closed session after Republicans were accused of bringing unconstitutional charges against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. The only rational way to resolve this question is actually to debate it to consider the Constitution and consider the law. Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz, as Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, tried to push an agreement to allow limited debate on impeachment instead of a full trial. We gave your side a chance for debate in public, where it should be. And your side objected. We are moving forward. Schumer says the case against Mayorkas doesn't meet the high standard of high crimes and misdemeanors. Republicans accuse the secretary of willfully refusing to enforce immigration laws. If the second article is also dismissed, the impeachment trial will be over before arguments start. President Biden proposing higher tariffs on Chinese steel and aluminum. They're not competing. They're cheating. They're cheating. And we've seen the damage here in America. You know, back in the early 2000s, the Chinese still began floating the mar- fl- flooding the market in steel towns all across Pennsylvania and Ohio, who hit very hard. The president in Pittsburgh with steel workers, his second of three days campaigning in Pennsylvania. After announcing that plan, telling reporters he's not concerned. The higher tariffs will hurt his relationship with China's president. The president also announcing he's backing the House Speaker's plan to advance aid for Israel and Ukraine by putting separate bills on the floor with votes expected Saturday. Former President Trump, meantime, meeting with Poland's president, who's also making a pitch for more U.S. aid to Ukraine. To Ukraine. Stocks finish lower. The Dow down 46 points at the bell. America is listening to Fox News. Don't let everyday aches and pains keep you from living your best life. I don't think I really understood what people meant when they talked about pain until I started feeling it myself. Start feeling better every day with Relief Factor, a daily supplement designed to support your body's fight against aches and pains. Not only do I move better without pain, I just feel better. Created by doctors, Relief Factor uses a unique formula of natural ingredients that target four metabolic pathways to address pain. Relief Factor doesn't just mask aches and pains, it helps reduce or even eliminate them. Today, I do the things I love and it doesn't occur to me to think about pain. You can feel the difference all day, every day. Join the over 1 million people who have tried Relief Factor's three-week quick start kit. It's only $19.95 and comes with our feel better or your money back guarantee. Visit relieffactor.com or call 1-800-4-RELIEF. That's 1-800-4-RELIEF. Rough, rough. Cream, baby. 403. I got your cream right here. 1983, Felix Papillardi, the producer and bass player with American rock band Mountain, was shot dead by his wife, Gail, uh, during a jealous rage. In a fit of relish jage. It wasn't that. In a writ of, fel- a fit, a writ of felis jage. <laughs> Peter Sellers. I should be laughing about that. Guy, the girl killed him. My God, man. His wife killed him, shot him dead. During a jealous rage, Collins was convicted of criminally negligent homicide. And for murdering her husband because she was ticked off, she got four years in prison. God, I can't believe they made her spend that long in prison for killing her husband. God, what happened to supporting the women? <clears throat> Maybe he treated her bad. Maybe he was cheating on her. So I showed- <laughs> God. Uh, Papillardi was 43. He had produced the Cream albums, Disraeli Gears and Wheels of Fire. I have no idea what that means. Yada tea. Birthdays include Rooney Mara. Rooney Mara is 39, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Hit theaters in 2018 as Mary Magdalene. Her, uh, she and her sister Kate, the former little hottie, are NFL royalty. Their dad's family, the Maras, own the New York Giants. And their mom's family, the Rooneys, own the Pittsburgh Steelers. Rooney and Kate are the great-granddaughters of the New York Giants founder, Tim Mara, and Pittsburgh Steelers founder, Art Rooney Sr. Rooney Mara, 39 years old today. And again, uh, the uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattooed, one of my favorite, not a, a, a movie, I'll, if it's on, I always DVR it and watch it again. And again, because it's in English where I can understand the words, therefore making it the best version of that movie you could get with the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, as opposed to a certain person I can uh, can name here in a moment who'd rather watch the version of the, uh, uh, the Garantino Girl Talako or the Dragon Talako Tattoo Lukanunga. 
<clears throat> which is, uh, you know, the girl with the dragon tattoo, in a foreign language. <clears throat> the Scandinavian three trilogy movies are a thousand percent better than the <laughs> yeah, English version. Yeah, because they have that subtitle. But that, that, to me, is a favorite part, reading while you're missing the action on okay. the screen. I, you're watching <laughs> Shogun, aren't you? Yes, I am. Because right, I happen to then. like the Asian ladies because I have uh, the yes. Kimmer's Fan Club Asian Cheerleader Division. With and I owe it to, Well, but they're, we're all in it together. We all kind of, we have like a mass little group. We sit around in a circle holding hands and we all get it together and because they can help me uh, with my translations. Oh, oh, you're a bunch of guys sitting around in a, in a, a, a no, circle watching Asian a lady on television. The you Asian Cheerleaders Contingent. The Asian called, Cheerleaders Contingent, Mr. The Mongolian Circle. Yeah, circle blank, yeah, yeah thank you. Calling that. Yeah, that's what I get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in the common decency to get my... Uh, three, uh, it's a 406. Three, so, so, hey, ho, uh, three, uh, 406. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Even Kevin Spacey says that's creepy. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, 406, here's the number, 404 uh, Do you know the name John Legozamo? I've, he's, he's a really good actor. In fact, I, he was on, not too long ago, I was watching another version of, uh, oh, God, the, uh, ow, I hate this. Um, uh, the, oh God, I hate this. Uh, the uh, sh- the shooting movie where the guy steals his car and it's like uh, it's so it's, it, there's one and two three versions and it's all violence and it's the it's uh, the guy who's he played a space creature one time in a movie and he didn't talk very much. Uh, he's he's he, uh, uh, he, uh, oh God, I hate this. Um, <laughs> no idea. Oh about. Lord. Anyway, he played a, he played a, he played a a a, 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 sh- a, a card shop. A, a mechanic and uh, some bad guys uh, uh, killed the guy's dog and his wife and then he stole they, they stole his car and so he went to get a new car uh, there's John a ser- Wick? yeah 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 Oh yeah, uh, he played the the garage guy in John Wick, and he punched out the uh, the son of the uh, big time uh, hoodlum guy. Uh, he's really John Legozamo, uh, how you pronounce it. Uh, he's they call him here a comedian. The story I'm reading here for you now, which I'm going to get to here in a moment. Uh, <clears throat> he's an actor and comedian, and he was hosting the I uh, guest hosting the Daily Show, and people started talking about what's going on politically these days. And when someone mentioned that Donald Trump is getting apparently more Latino voters, uh, at least their attention, than uh, President Crime Family. Apparently, uh, founder, if you would, uh, John Ligazamo, on uh, the, uh, filling in for The Daily Show, uh, just freaking lost it. Any moment he was, he thought about losing it, and then he decided to lose it, and then he said, "I mean, clearly yeah. Trump isn't making any effort to to get Latino voters or making a priority. But the the thing that hurts me the most is that his lazy strategy is actually working." A recent New York Times Siena College poll shows former President Trump gaining ground among Latino voters. The preference among Latino voters, I think, is at forty six percent. Yeah. Donald Trump, forty percent. Joe Biden. Excuse me for a second, please. <laughs> There's a pinata. On your oh. triple web. Make la madre. Super party. Mal parido. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, he went on to say, it looks like Democrats are in trouble. You might be thinking, how is this possible? Trump is winning Latinos. Build the wall, Donald Trump. Mass deportations, Donald Trump. Guy who thinks Daddy Yankee is a baseball player, Donald Trump. But the truth is, in 2024, Latino voters have something else on their minds. That's right, folks. The election's all about inflation. He seems to think that by, <laughs> that the administration's making inflation better. Doing something. I just I showed you the video. I just paid five dollars yeah. last night for a gallon of gasoline. He lives in that little bubble, and they all God. talk the same speak. Yeah, I mean it's just uh, it's just absolutely incredible. Uh, Biden has gotten the lowest Latino support in the latest survey, uh, Times Siena survey, uh, the lowest uh, for a college survey, the lowest turnout of support ever, like less than fifty percent, forty percent. No Democrats ever been uh, labeled with that. I, I still I, I still can't believe they're going to run him. I, I'm, I'm, it's getting too late now. I mean, hell, it's almost May. 
And, uh, you know, the convention's, what, July or August? I guess August. I can't remember which one. Anyway, whatever. All right. No, uh, none of my business, except I think they're freaking crazy. Um, oh, speaking of politics and liberals, I love the way I love the way this story came out. The Al Jazeera constipation has this uh, big story with the pictures and everything. Ossoff on mail delays. Fix this in time right now. Yes, the Senate committee grills Postmaster General on a troubling lag in delivery. Apparently, Senator John Ossoff is so angry at the delay in the United States mail that he was pounding his desk and saying, I want you to fix this right now. Not next month, not in three months, but you've got two weeks. And if you don't start delivering the mail better than you are right now, I, Senator of the United States, John also will make sure that you never get any more free parking spots, even if you work at the post office. Now clean up that mess over there and stop. You're running out of calories. You've run... What a pimp. What a smarmy little pimp. You mean to tell me that in the paper... This is unbelievable. Talk about the the liberal freaking press. The the paper has gone out of its way to make a story about that with pictures and a whole big color thing and angry people yelling, something like that, over John Ossol's complaints about the post office? That's their... That's their... their, This is going to put him over the top? The Atlanta post office thing is so screwed up. I have two or three friends that have had, had check payments to places where they call them and say, where's your payment? And they were all going through the, the Atlanta thing. It's completely messed up down there. Well, that, I've had my problems with the Alpharetta one, too, and that's why I only go into the post office and only put it in the thing inside. They don't. Need, they block all the uh, little blue boxes. No, now, I'm talking about how incompetent office. they are. Yeah, I'm not trying to steal them. That's how incompetent the post office workers are now down uh, in Atlanta. Well, anyway, uh, and by the way, speaking of that, my daughter Jennifer's birthday is on Friday, and so I mailed last week. I went, uh, I went to, I, I, I mailed her a package of kind of a weird thing. It was like a, a, a it laid probably fourteen ounces. It was very, very light. It was a very light item in, a, in kind of an elongated package, but it was, it was, you know, like three feet long, but only about four inches in diameter, like a golf club type package. Uh, very, very light. And so I went to. That's the, what uh, she said. I, thank you so much. Uh, but not much in the package there, Mister. Uh, anyway, so uh, <laughs> like I never heard we, that we, before. We got breaking news here. All right, let's do it. President Biden twice today uh, said that his uncle Ambrose Finnegan was eaten by cannibals in New Guinea <laughs> after his plane went down in World War II, even though military records show the aircraft disappeared <laughs> over the Pacific. Biden said he got shot down in an area where there were a lot of cannibals at the time before getting on Air Force One and leaving Scranton. And when he landed in Pittsburgh, he told the United Steelworkers Union the same thing. He got shot down in New Guinea and they never found the body because there used to be a lot of cannibals there. (laughs) (laughs) The man can't help himself. And what's the name of that uncle? I mean, Finnicky Fiddlinging or something? What the hell? Ambrose Finnegan. Ambrose Finnegan. That's oh, me. my God. He's Finnegan, but he's Finnegan. Oh, my Lord. Eaten by cannibals. Oh, my God. <laughs> I hope that's on audio somewhere. We, if the Republicans aren't using all these things as campaign commercials. I heard somebody on my Facebook message page sent me an audio interview with Carmela Sidepiece, our shiftless and lazy vice president, where she was asked a question, and, and she came out with an answer which was the worst I've ever heard, where it was like, I mean, it made absolutely no sense at all. You've got to play all these for, for campaign commercials. Not that he had do fava good. beans and a nice canty well, with his uncle there. Good Lord. 413, Kimber Pete and Flounder. And uh, Lord knows what we're doing next. Lindsey Graham's got a complaint, and I don't blame him. Lake and Riley, update. Kimber Pete and Flounder next, coming up too. And the jury, Trump jury. Time for the Bortz Report, exclusively on Atlanta's only conservative news and talk station, Extra 1063. Let's just say that my wife and I have some rather odd tastes in television. News, sometimes sitcoms, no. The first 48 is a favorite, but we really like to catch a smuggler. Customs and Border Patrol agents around the world catching people trying to sneak drugs into the country. It's really aggravating, though, to watch what people have to go through when they're trying to get into this country illegally. 
This is even if they have a valid passport. They take them into an interview room. Where are you going? How long are you going to be here? Where are you staying? Can you show us your reservations? Can you show us your ticket to leave this country? How much money do you have? How can you support yourself on that money while you're here? You don't have a work visa. You're not allowed to work. You're not allowed to accept even donations. And they put these people through all of this questioning. And if they're not satisfied with the answers, they don't even get to leave the airport. They turn them around and put them on the first plane back from whence they came. Now, why is this aggravating? This is what they're supposed to be doing. Making sure people follow the rules when they try to get into our country. It's aggravating because if you're paying any attention, you know what's going on at our southern border. People from virtually every country in this planet, if they can just get to Mexico, they can walk across the border. They don't have to make any showing that they're going to leave after a couple of months. They certainly don't have to show that they can support themselves. They're just put on buses or planes, sent to other parts of this country, given EBT cards, sometimes a place to stay, welcome to America. Good thing you didn't try to fly into Chicago. Can any of you imagine just why it's this way? Why did Joe Biden open the southern border? Four words, future votes for Democrats. And so it goes. Neil Bortz, Extra 106.3. Hey, homeowners, Tug here with some exciting news. Southern Exteriors is your one-stop solution for top-notch exterior services, from roofing to siding, windows, gutters, and more. No more waiting. They can start on your project immediately. And with an in-house warranty division, Southern Exteriors stands by their work for years to come. From leaky roofs to faded siding, trust Southern Exteriors for a quick and lasting transformation. Don't wait. Transform your home today. Call 877-9-SOUTHERN or visit Southern Exteriors. Co now Southern Exteriors quality and precision you can rely on for over 20 years. Pack your bags and join the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets football team in Dublin, Ireland as Toby Leather to kick off the 2024 football season in Dublin. The Erlingus College Football Classic will feature your Yellow Jackets versus the Florida State Seminoles in a special Week Zero matchup on August 24, 2024. Don't miss this unique opportunity to visit one of the world's most popular travel destinations while cheering on the Jackets on a global stage. For travel packages, tickets, and more information, go to gt2ireland.com. Sting them. What are your plans for your business this year? Hey, it's Tug. Do you want to expand and grow? Aren't you exhausted by going to lenders, building a relationship, and a week later, you got a new person to deal with? You have to start all over again? You don't have that with First Liberty Building and Loan. The Frost family has been helping businesses grow since the 90s, and they want to know you. Unlike big banks, they want to partner with you. The Frost family knows the patterns. They know the ebbs and flows. They know business. Get to know them at FirstLibertyGA.com. Building a building? Buying a building? Buying a franchise? Expanding? Reach out to them. Spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a fit for them and if they're a fit for you. You do that at FirstLibertyGA.com. And by the way, if you're a young banker and want to work with a team that is faith-friendly and has a culture of excellence, First Liberty might be a good match. Reach out to them today. First Liberty Building and Loan. FirstLibertyGA.com. That's FirstLibertyGA.com. I enjoy a good night's sleep, and I like to breathe while I'm sleeping. My wife appreciates that, too. That's why I wear a CPAP. You want the right machine. You want expert advice. You want all the supplies that go with it. You get it all at CPAPs etc. in Alpharetta. Machines, masks, tubing, filters, cleaning supplies, all of it, and they ship nationwide. Walk-ins, by the way, are welcome. CPAPs, etc. Alpharetta, CPAPSETC.com. Oh, goodness. Don't recognize this intro. <coughs> Still don't. Elvis. I know, but I don't recognize it. A little less conversation, a little more action. All this aggravation ain't satisfaction in me. A little more bite, a little less bark. A little less bite, a little more spark. Put your muscles under your heart. Everybody's fighting. That is fighting. Put your muscles under your heart. I don't think I've ever heard this song. 
I've played it about a dozen times on here. Well, that's that's uh, <laughs> certainly sounds about right, Flounder. <laughs> really appreciate it. <laughs> you know, I have this short-term memory thing going here, you know. What? <laughs> Elvis Presley. <laughs> you can all just eat me. How about that? 1975, Elvis Presley bought a Convair 880 jet. Formerly owned by Delta Airlines, Elvis bought it for a quarter of a million in 1975. He rechristened it Lisa Marie. Mm -hmm. Presley spent $600,000 refurbishing the jet to include personal mm -hmm. quarters, a meeting area, and a dance floor. Do you know who else has been on that jet? Uh, I can only imagine. Who? You? Me. You were, how'd you get on that jet? Because it's parked across the street from Graceland. <laughs> I'll be damned. And they'll let you go on there and everything? Cool. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Is it a hotel now? There's Graceland? a hotel next to it called Heartbreak <laughs> Motel or something like that next to it, too. And a car no. museum, which is pretty cool. But aren't they, weren't they going to change Graceland to do something? There was some big thing going on about changing it to do like a bed and breakfast or something? I don't know. Maybe it's such not. a bad neighborhood, yeah. but still. It's a, mm -hmm. you know. All right, let's see. Uh, 421, Kim Pete and Flounder. Our birthday list includes Jennifer Garner. Yes, please. 52. Uh, and, uh, just a greatly, I think. I think. I think everything about. I, think, I don't think anyone's ever said anything bad, nasty about her in any way. And she's beautiful. And I love that show. The al Alias was it? Whether she was in, played that hot shot uh, yeah. undercover. Screaming chick. liberal, but uh, yeah, well, she's got I didn't a tranny know that. kid. She's turned a little oh, boy God, into that, a girl. Oh, we just talked. Yeah, we didn't. We just talk yeah. about that. Oh yeah. Oh, and by the way, the day after that they had that or not, that, that big story broke. The day after there was a story that I actually had in front of me, but we never got to the, the next day of a fact article about how wonderful she looked. The little new girl boy, uh, daughter, son that they have, and how wonderful her outfit was, and it made him look, she had a good suit and tie on. I mean, jeez. I mean, you know, here we go. Uh, whatever. I mean, it's, you know, it's her kid, and uh, uh, whatever. Okay. Uh, in history, 421. Uh, in history, let's say 1961, 1,500 Cuban exiles, supported by our government, invaded the Bay of Pigs on the southern coast of Cuba, trying to overthrow Fidel Castro. It failed miserably. Uh, four days later, they had all been killed or captured. The CIA had recommended to Dwight Eisenhower... Do it. Recruit, support, equip, and train these Cuban exiles. They'll go in there and they'll overthrow Castro the quicker than he can spit on the sidewalk. Well, after the change to the new U.S. President John Kennedy in February, who has also advised the operation would be a success, the operation continued. Cuba was tipped off by senior KGB agents and intelligence forces arrested more than 100,000 Cubans who they suspected would be allies of the expected invading force, ensuring the invading force would be cut from support. And as for the rest of them, uh, hold on a second, now I lost my place here. A uh, hundred attackers were killed immediately, 200 escaped, the remaining 1,200 were captured and held for ransom. And uh, the Bay of Pigs, 1961. And I remember I was in prep school, and I remember, man, we were, people were freaked out. They thought, here we go. I mean, it's, uh, you know, and then the Cuban blockade to the next, was it 62, I think, Cuban blockade, or 63, 62, I think, I don't remember. Anyway. Uh, Kimber, Pete, and Flounder, how you doing? 423. Uh, oh, by the way, for, for record, I, I wanted to finish the Jennifer thing just to show how things have changed. I mailed her a package for her birthday uh, last uh, Friday, I think it was, or maybe it was Saturday, whatever. And uh, at FedEx, because it was right near me instead of going to UPS or the post office, because right. So I went to FedEx, and I, I wanted to get, it's, it weighed really less than a pound, just a very, very lightweight thing, but kind of in a funny shape. Okay, so they said, okay, if you want to get it there by Tuesday, I mean, I'm sorry, if you want to get it there by Wednesday, it'll be $25. And this was like on the previous Friday or Saturday. I said, I said, yeah, okay, great, twenty five. I said, what if I want to make sure it gets there earlier because her birthday's Friday? And she said, well, it's twenty five dollars to get there Wednesday, and it'll be a hundred and one dollars to get there Tuesday. <laughs> so that's, well, that's fairly severe for an upgrade. So I'll take the Wednesday thing. But anyway, just to tell you, God, remember when packages used to be, you know, six dollars or whatever? Yeah, unbelievable. What'd you do? What well, was amazing at the Masters, you can buy your stuff and walk across the little thing there and mail it right there. It was unbelievable. Really? That's, yeah. I, I'll be damned. What were you ripping up there? I, I saw you ripping something. I heard ripping. It was, I saw you ripping. It, okay, it was this, I got this thing in the mail saying I owed uh, some doctor money here, and they'd send it to a debt collector. So I went online what? to where it was here, yeah. and it basically, it has somebody else's name. 
It's not my bill. <laughs> so he ripped up someone else's bill. Collector, yeah, bill. screw this. Screw him. Poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> not hey, my problem. He's not here, officer. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of him. No, Andre. sir. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, speaking of that, hold on, there's a scam uh, scam going around. Uh, the FBI, like we could trust them. Anyway, it's called sma- a smishing scheme. Critical warning, a pervasive scam sweeping the country, targeting sophisticated series of, M- of SMS phishing or smishing that bait fictitious unpaid road toll charges. Uh, influx of 2,000 new complaints. The uh, investigators say messages in uniform near deception assert the recipients delinquent on a toll road payment. They manipulate them into clicking on links that are designed to mimic legitimate state toll uh, websites complete with fluctuating phone numbers to elude detection. Uh, Pennsylvania Turnpike has been at the front of this. Uh, they say uh, uh, state police counterfeit websites designed to steal your personal data. And it's going all over the place. Easy pass customers use the toll service. I've used those before. I had them when I was down in Florida. Uh, and, uh, you know, so anyway, so be, be alert. Again, I hate, you know, I get stuff in the mail and I just, I don't trust anything. I don't open anything on my phone either. I don't trust anything. I just realized in about a month or so, some guy named Andre is going to have a really bad day. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm under arrest. <laughs> it's a lawsuit. <laughs> I don't have a lawyer. <laughs> ah, God, I love it. Oh, I love oh let me, I, I don't understand. It's 326. Kim Repeat and Flounder, how's it going? A guy in Austell, Georgia, 23-year-old Anthony McGee, was arrested on the East-West Connector Austell Atlanta Walmart. And apparently he was using his cell phone, turning it upside down, activated the light on it, and held the cell phone underneath skirts of women who were shopping. So upskirting. I haven't even heard of upskirting in 30 or 40 years that I remember. Remember that was the thing and they actually had sticks, and, you know, like the, the uh, selfie sticks where you could put the phone on this thing and, and a woman wouldn't know that you're looking up with a stick underneath. But he apparently he was just holding holding it under a woman's dress. An escalator. <coughs> and there's there's another one at Target. The lead store in Daily Mail is a guy in Greenville, doesn't say which Greenville, at a Target store doing the same thing. But, but, but what what are you going to see? Nothing. Unless a woman's naked and walking bow-legged, all you're going to see is a dark area where you see two legs coming together. Oh, well, hell, I'll do it right now. Hold on a minute. I'll, I'll, let's, put, oh, I'll, let's do a video right now, what and I'll you show doing? you. Let me see what you get when you do that. Okay, I've, I've got my video. In yeah, fact, I'll do, it on, on. I'll do it on selfie so I can hold it on. Okay, Flon, you got this? Let's go. All right, here we go. All right, can you see me? I don't know if you can see me. I can see you. Okay, all I right, I'm going gonna to do this. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to walk right. around. I'm walking. I'm walking. That's, uh... Walking. walking over here. Okay, stop I'm doing that, over please. This area. Okay, I'm walking stop, over please. this area now. Yeah, stop. Okay, now I'm going to stop the video, and I'm going to stop it. I'm going to play it. He can't hear the headphones on. Hold on a second. See what we got here. Now we're going to go please back stop. to the audio. <laughs> and, okay, I'm looking yeah, at stop. it, and uh, let's see. Oh, come on, play. Oh, here we go. I'm going to stop it. Oh, man, I look. Oh, oh, it's, oh it's not see working. See how creepy that is? It's stopping on itself. Oh, my God, it didn't work. You well, touched thank it, God. Uh, it didn't yeah, work. I got two God. seconds of it and the rest of it died. Well, screw it. But again, I mean, what's the point? How is it possible? I mean, maybe we can get one of the girls on the sales. Any, any of the girls out in the sales? Anybody out there, Flounder? Can you get one of the girls out there and see if she, we can trust you? Who? I, no. Who? Oh, <laughs> no. We don't have any girls work here. <laughs> Flounder, stop him. You know, I, I mean, I'm really serious about it. The, the, it, can't be, it can't be a sexual thing because there's nothing sexual to see. So it's obviously an invasion of privacy. It's a power thing. It's a, it's a humiliating thing and stuff like that. But still, what's what's the possible? You can't. There's nothing to see. Uh, even the I famous, never understood that. even the even the famous Sharon Stone scene in the movie uh, with yeah. uh, Michael Douglas. She didn't, there was, I mean, the whole thing is, is uh, what is upskirting? What possible yeah. other than just being, you know, humiliating a girl? Cleavage shots are one thing, but well, that, that's sure. I don't get a little it. side boob or something once in a while. Yeah. You know, going to the dental hygienist, give it a little something there. You know, and the, oh, sorry, no, no, it's fine. You know, you know. Once again, a bridge too far. <laughs> Oh, and you hear about the guy in, in Catoosa County, Georgia. Uh, got a, a, Somebody heard somebody screaming underneath an overpass, so they called the cops and the fire department. Sure enough, there's a guy trapped in a 24-inch drain pipe. 
off the highway. And he had been clogged with the rocky and heavy debris, so they had to get the suck-out vacuum truck from the fire department to nearby Fort Ogleworth Public Works to suck out all the material in the pipe to finally get 22-year-old Thomas Lower out of that pipe. A two-foot pipe in his body stuck in there for Ugh. a day, for at least oh. a day. Oh. At least a day. <laughs> anyway, he's fine now, but they took him to the hospital to figure out what the hell he was doing in there in the first place. Uh, 4.30, come repeat and flounder. <laughs> we don't know why he went down there, sir. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> The legend Neil Bortz is only on Extra 106.3. Hey, it's Tug, and here's what you missed from the Talkmaster. I mean, I cannot bring myself to vote for a Democrat. I just can't do it. And that's why in most of the last 10 presidential elections, I voted Libertarian. Catch Neil's commentary every day on Extra 106.3 or listen anytime on the Extra 106.3 app. True Prep on Cobb Parkway is your one-stop shop for emergency preparedness supplies, including freeze-dried food, water filtration, first aid, and more. They also have a large selection of firearms, including a huge selection of AR-15s, firearm accessories, and ammo at the lowest prices around. They are locally owned and operated. You can visit their store in Marietta on Cobb Parkway or online at trueprep.com. That's T-R-U prep.com. Prepare today for a worry-free tomorrow at True Prep. Hey, it's Lowe's. Let's talk about Howard Brothers and Kawasaki Engines. Landscapers rely on their equipment every day and need capable power and the team at Howard Brothers and Kawasaki Engines answers. Kawasaki Engines deliver the power and performance that Howard Brothers customers demand. Whether the equipment on their trailer is an Xmark, Skag, Cub Cadet, Toro, or Walker, chances are the mowers are powered by Kawasaki Engines. The folks at Howard Brothers know power equipment better than anyone. The grass is always greener when you take care of it with Kawasaki Engines and Howard Brothers. Central Heating and Air Conditioning wants you to know the start of the new season is the perfect time to ensure your home's comfort. Don't wait like most people do to have your HVAC system serviced. Your home should have maintenance twice a year. Maintenance helps keep your system running at peak efficiency and extends the life of your equipment. So turn to Atlanta's carrier experts for your system's maintenance. With Central, you get carrier products, carrier warranty, and carrier peace of mind. It's allergy season and Central Heating and Air can fix what ails your house and possibly your family with home ventilation and air quality products. Central has packages designed around health using variable speed, fresh air ventilation, air cleaners, air purifiers, dehumidifiers, and more. Central Heating and Air is one of the few second generation locally owned and operated HVAC companies in Atlanta. With Central, you're not just a number, you're a member of the family. It's been that way since 1947, and they've serviced over 100,000 customers right here in Atlanta. Call 770-GET-HEAT or go to centralheat.com. We're smart, we care. We're Central Heating and it's a mad world out there, but one thing is certain, everyone is trying to market something. So tune in every Saturday at 3 p.m. to the Marketing Mad Men, who, along with a variety of industry expert guests, can help you make sense of it all. Whether you own a business and want tips to scale, or are a fan of the finer things in life and want to know how restaurants, golf courses, and wine companies try to sell you stuff, the Marketing Mad Men is your ultimate destination for all things marketing. Tune in right here on Extra 106.3 every Saturday at 3 p.m. or search online for more content. Join the madness with the Marketing Mad Men. At the Piedmont Bank, we're proud to be one of Georgia's largest community banks, focusing on serving businesses and the communities they serve. With headquarters right here in Metro Atlanta, our tailored banking expertise and solutions help meet the diverse needs of our customers so they have what it takes to grow, expand, and thrive. It's what elevates us above the rest. Find a location near you at Piedmont.Bank and experience elevated banking for you and your business. The Piedmont Bank. Banking elevated. Member FDIC and Equal Housing lender no <laughs> even I can recognize this stuff. the dark side baby the dark side 433 Pink Floyd 73 Pink Floyd's album Dark Side of the Moon Gold in America the LP went on to stay in the chart for more than 10 years and The Dark Side of the Moon became the longest charting rock album record of all time. 1973, Gold in America, Pink Floyd. 
Yeah, birthday list includes that naughty Leslie Vega. Leslie Vega's 57. Leslie Vega played Maria, the head of the class show. But she'll, to me, always be Valentina, that naughty little tramp from The Sopranos who made Ralphie step in the uh, horse poop in the stable. Uh, did little tricks on uh, Tony where she changed the sugar to the salt or something in the bowl or whatever. Uh, and then my favorite part was when she uh, was uh, kitchen, uh, kitchen, with cooking in the kitchen and didn't realize her robe was on fire and set herself on fire. So that was pretty weird. Uh, she, not the Mercedes girl. This is what we're talking about is Leslie Bega, 57. Not the Mercedes girl. It was the other one, the, the uh, kinky one. And I use the word Valentina when I have my car videos to make sure we uh, keep on the illegal up and up here. Uh, 435, Kim Repeat and Flounder. On this day in history, 55 years ago, 1969, Sirhan Sirhan, convicted of assassinating Robert Kennedy, was given the death penalty a week later, but then ended up again in uh, 69, but ended up serving life after California abolished the death penalty three years later in 1972. Uh, it's at 4.35 and our 4 o'clock hours brought to you by our good friends at the home of the Kimmer sponsor, home of the Kimmer Safes, Atlanta Safe House. They have a showroom in Ackworth. You may not think you need a safe, but believe me, take it from me. You've heard my stories. You need a safe, including your social security card. Please tell them the Kimmer sent you. Enjoy what they can do for you. AtlantaSafeHouse.com. 435 404-741-1230. 741-1230. Um, Let's see. Uh, the, oh, the, the, th- think about how you do you real? Does anybody really trust that Donald Trump is going to get anything near a fair trial in New York for the so-called hush money payment of Stormy Daniels and the Playboy girl? Is there any chance that you believe that he would either have a hung jury or be acquitted? Well, let's do it either way. Is there? Do you believe there's any chance that he'll have a hung jury? I think that's possible. Uh, But do you think there's any chance that 12 jurors would find Donald Trump not guilty of anything in New York City? Mm -mm. No way. No. No way. In fact, uh, Bill Barr. But uh, is the rest of our country going to put up with New York City trying to tell us who we can vote for? Well, I'm, that's that's going to be the interesting reaction because remember the liberals are the ones who go nuts. They just they start tearing down buildings and they set fire to car dealerships and uh, take over factory. I mean, you know, the liberals are the ones that go crazy. Republicans don't. We're working and we're you know we just don't don't do that kind of thing. But I mean, if this goes honestly, if this goes all the way, if they try, if they actually keep him off the ballot, there's going to be hell to pay. Yep, and should be, and there should be hell to pay. This is a revolution. I mean, you cannot keep a political candidate off the a former president, for God's sakes, uh, for phony criminal charges that were never meant to be criminal charges against this uh, charge in, in any way, shape, or form. A hundred million people in this country should not be told you have no right to pick who you vote for anymore. Yeah. Well, here's the reason I'm making a point is because they have said the, no trial today, no uh, no uh, action in the court today. They resume tomorrow, and tomorrow I think is when he was supposed to go. To the, wanted to go to the Supreme Court to watch the exercise of the, the latest Supreme Court case tomorrow for Trump. But anyway, uh, so they're off today. But uh, here's what's going on: they've seated, I guess, seven jurors, at, including one who was called back, even though there was obviously some liberal stuff in, in his or her. I think it was a woman's background. Uh, But here's the other thing. A potential juror named Kara McGee works in cybersecurity, and she's the one, you may have seen her interviewed on TV. She uh, spoke to reporters and they asked her about the selection process, but here's what's important to remember. Apparently the reason that she was not chosen on the jury is because of a scheduling problem. She couldn't uh, She couldn't tell them that she would be able to stay there because of some things that were serious enough that the judge said, well, because of scheduling, we won't put you on the jury. But listen to what she believes about Donald Trump. And if it hadn't been for the scheduling thing, she may well have been the, uh, sitting on the jury. Here's what she had to say about it. Can you share your opinion uh, of, of the former president and, and, and why share you your felt opinion. that you could be unbiased? Uh, I'm not a fan. Um, I, during uh, COVID-19, I lived with someone who was immunocompromised, and I think his handling of COVID-19 was... Uh, abysmal. Um, I also I have a sister who is adopted from China, and um, the comments he made about China when he was running for president um, made her very anxious, and therefore made me angry. Um, there are policies he has supported um, that regard uh, women and, and reproductive health that I do not agree with. Um, 
Well, anyway, you can cut it there. I mean, I, it's unbelievable. The first thing she says, well, uh, um, what was it like though, in telling him that you could be, uh, you know, without any uh, a biased opinion? And she says, well, I'm not a fan. The first thing she said was, I'm not a fan. And then she blasted Donald Trump. She could have been on the jury. And by the way, I, I, I don't know what happened. I haven't seen anybody with a peremptory challenge. I thought you got a certain number of, uh, of challenges for anything you wanted. And you got a certain mm-hmm. number of times when you say, well, I think that guy's biased. And then he had to prove it and do stuff. And the judge could rule on it. So, has anybody challenged anything? I've not seen you a do? single word of, of, any, of either lawyer from either side saying, mm-hmm. uh, no, that one's not going to work. You do in Georgia. I don't know what New York does. And I... I well, you know, may, it's a federal. Well, gee, I, I know. I I don't know why I don't know this either. I'm really. I, I, I I'm apologizing to you because I should have known. I mean, I thought that I asked the question. I thought every. You can't tell me that a criminal trial that the lawyers no longer get peremptory challenges for jury selection and voir dire. But nonsense. They they limit to the number of them. I know that you don't get fifty. I mean, you get like four of uh, of for no reason at all, and then you get uh, three or four that you have to prove or something like that. I mean, have we got any lawyers out there? I mean, I swear to God, I can't believe this. And I haven't heard of a single one. Now, maybe they haven't covered it uh, when it happened the first two days. Again, they're off today. But uh, maybe they haven't covered it. But I, but you'd think that they, they would say, oh, no, they, they one woman said she uh, she wanted to be on there. But they said, no, we know you're a liar because we saw your Facebook post. I mean, these, these should be issues. These should be news stories of who doesn't get on if they challenge them. I know for a fact we have a large audience of Mexican mall lawyers. So one of them must Well, know. by golly. Uh, Rodrigo, where are you, buddy? Uh, uh, Julio, come on, you guys. Abogados. Uh, <laughs> Andre. Yeah. Uh, dos margaritas. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, anyway, I don't even know what that means. Um, let's see. And, and, of course, Donald Trump had to sit there while they were telling him we don't like him. I don't believe him. <laughs> Unbelievable. And again, uh, I guarantee you that the people on that jury, I guarantee you that there are people on that jury who will be able to fake it and they will be on, seated on the jury and they will never, ever, ever vote to acquit Donald Trump. Breaking sure. news. Sure. Breaking news. Flounder, what do you got? Senate strikes down both impeachment articles against Biden border chief Mayorkas. Yeah, uh, in fact, a headline on the uh, TV says Senate ends and dismisses two articles again. Now, is the whole thing over? Did they uh, cancel it or did they just uh, dismiss, uh, dismiss two out of others? I think it's not- done. Well, by golly. Uh, yeah, sounds like it's done. It was voted on party lines. Well, Schumer apparently had to go to court. Yeah, thanks to Georgia. Thank you, Georgia, two liberal senators. And once again, nothing will ever be accomplished. And by the way, I'm glad. Uh, for the record, uh, Mayorkas was impeached. For the record in history, Mayorkas was impeached, just like Donald Trump was impeached. And Andrew Johnson was impeached. They were not convicted. But he was impeached, just like Donald Trump. And the more they do this, the more it'll look back as a bunch of stupid, silly political crap games going on and won't have any meaning. It should not have any meaning with Donald Trump any more than anything else. And we knew nothing was going to go anywhere. Anything was going to go anywhere, excuse me, because of Georgia. So so obviously it's, it's political, uh, you know, gamesmanship, which is fine. They started it, so let's keep doing it. Let's impeach them all. I mean, just to, just to do it. If you have, the, if you still have people in the house, impeach the vice president. I mean, impeach Biden. I mean, do, do all of them. So it becomes a ridiculous, stupid game, and, and has no meaning. <laughs> I, I just discovered on the camera here. Yeah. Every once in a while, you say something, and I'll cock my head, and I look like that dog in the meme. Yes, you do. Just looking at. <laughs> it wasn't mean now, but what you going with this? <laughs> I don't like the sound of this actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it could get a lot worse here, I can tell you. Um, coming up, a lady who tried to have, uh, bring a dead body with her to help open a bank account, which is kind of a little freaky. Uh, we'll talk about uh, so-and-so's weekend with Bernie or whatever. Uh, but again, a couple things here. There's uh, something showing up on social media I thought was kind of weird about old people sharing things that used to be normal in schools, specifically in schools. <clears throat> For example... Uh, in the uh, uh, when I was in elementary school in 1963 in Eaton Rapids, Michigan, this person says the local power company did a presentation on the wonders of nuclear power and passed around a chunk of radioactive ore for the kids to handle. <laughs> I remember radium watches. Do you have a radium and a radium watch that glowed in the I dark? I remember them. Oh wow, well, I I, we all had one. We had we, we used to wear them all the night long in bed and we look at our watch and that because it glowed in the dark. 
We all had radium watches. <laughs> well, that explains it. <laughs> so it explains the prostate of... cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in fact, I just, I just, in fact, I got rid of all that stuff today. I went into that very nice lady, veteran services lady. There's one of my four medical things coming up, and I talked to her, and she, and I said, well, you know, the, I've been going through this stuff, and she said, well, you know, I said the things I, the things I tried to claim for from t- you know 21 years ago uh, were so important with the with the uh, chemo from the Agent Orange and the stuff, and it cost me cost me a freaking marriage. And the VA came back after a year and said, no, we're going to give 0%, a zero compensation for that kind of stuff. And I said, I said, I'm telling the lady that they've been screwing me for a year and a half and all this stuff. And she said, well, you know, a lot of people have to reapply. And, and I said, well, I, I, you know, and it all brought up again. And I taught all the stuff that I had to fill out and stuff. And I finally, I just broke down. I absolutely just broke down and, uh, and uh, just broke down right there in her office. And I said, ma'am, I said, thank you for trying and helping. And I picked up my papers and I said, cancel it all. I'm done. I can't, I, I can't go through it again. It's just like when, with my wife, Hoppo, on the beach, where things that have never been said or uttered in 56 years, mm-hmm. and she brought it all up again. And I said, it had already cost me my life. I, I, can't, I can't keep doing this, especially when, you know, they, they want me to put all this doctor stuff that doesn't exist in, in my records anymore. I mean, I, just, I, can't, I can't do it. I got a life to live. I got stuff to do. And, you know, I got to work. I got people. So, you know, screw them, you know, give it to somebody who's willing to go through two years of crap for $200 a month who really needs it. I don't need it. I'm not damn, damn disabled. I'm not handicapped. I did my thing and I'm proud of it and that's over. That's it. I'm done. It's freaking done. I can't keep doing this stuff. Sorry. Okay. Done. That's it. Goodbye, America. 444. Well, I don't mean goodbye, America, of course. Uh, unless they change what they're doing and I'm going to Costa Rica like I said the other day. <laughs> anyway, uh, Flounder's Funny's coming up at Holy Grab of Sports in a half an hour and... Uh, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. God bless America. I, I love life, and I'm happy to be here. And boys, you know, it, I could be doing a lot worse than what we're doing right now. I swear to God. In fact, I'm going to have a happy memory coming up for the Kimbo, a uh, Kimbo, the Kimber Bingo card uh, coming up next with the Kimber Feet and Flounder at 446. <laughs> From the latest breaking news to the conservative voices you know and trust, your best new follow on social media is Extra 1063. We're at XTRA 1063 on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Threads, and LinkedIn, and pretty much any social media you scroll through every day. And we drop exclusive giveaways, new daily content, and the latest breaking news from Georgia and across this great nation. Interact with your favorite extra personalities. Get the latest on our live events and so much more. Follow at Extra 1063 across all your social media and keep up with Atlanta's only conservative voice. Join a Second Chance Bail Bond CEO Daniel Madelon and host Tug Coward for the weekly radio show Back Your Blue. They will highlight special initiatives, criminal justice programs, and community events aimed at keeping our communities safer. Tune in Saturdays at 10 a.m. to learn some good news about and from the law enforcement and justice communities. Tune in on Saturdays or catch up on all past episodes wherever you get your podcasts or at thepodcastpark.com. No one plans on going to jail, but when it happens, it's important that you know who to call. Call A Second Chance Bail Bonds, where we believe everyone deserves a second chance. Whether your loved one's been arrested in Cherokee, Clayton, or any of the other metro Atlanta counties in between, A Second Chance Bail Bonds works fast to help expedite release within hours. A Second Chance. It's better to know us and not need us than need us and not know us. Call A Second Chance 24-7 at 404-BAIL-OUT or online at atlbail.com. Millions of guys suffer from erectile dysfunction. That's one in four men. And I can tell you, I'm one of them. If you or someone you know suffer from ED, Peroni's disease, or PE, here's 38-year emergency room doctor and founder of Total Body Therapy of Georgia, Dr. Eric Deal. Patients who enter my office are often frustrated, hopeless, depressed, and embarrassed. I understand the problem, and I'm going to help you fix it. There are lots of competitors that don't have the credentials that I have. When you go to other clinics, you're not going to see board-certified physicians with the experience that I have. When you come to our clinic, you're going to see me. There's just not one therapy that can solve these complex issues. I'll do a complete history and physical prior to any treatment that we use. Take it from me, Dr. Deal. When it's not hard, it's really hard. Call Dr. Deal for your free one-on-one evaluation and resolve your ED, Peronis, or PE issues. Total Body Therapy of Georgia, 404-777-1911. 404-777-1911. Online at stopmyed.com. 
Hey, homeowners, Tug here with some exciting news. Southern Exteriors is your one-stop solution for top-notch exterior services, from roofing to siding, windows, gutters, and more. No more waiting. They can start on your project immediately. And with an in-house warranty division, Southern Exteriors stands by their work for years to come. From leaky roofs to faded siding, trust Southern Exteriors for a quick and lasting transformation. Don't wait. Transform your home today. Call 877-9-SOUTHERN or visit southernexteriors.co now. Southern Exteriors, quality and precision you can rely on for over 20 years. Steven, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, we can't offer you the position. Why? Well, we ran your background check and there were several red flags. Like what? You were arrested seven times for reckless driving. So? So you're applying for the school's bus driver position. If you're in charge of hiring for your company, you know how helpful a background screening can be. That's why companies that use Horizon Background Screening make smarter hiring decisions. Don't let the wrong hire put your company at risk. Get the real story on your candidates at horizonscreening.com. Horizonscreening.com. The Atlanta Braves invite fans to come experience the brand new Blue Moon Beer Garden at Truist Park, located in Wright Field, offering the largest variety of Molson Coors beer options and unique food pairings. Plus, there's a special ticket offer for the new space for any weekday game during the regular season. Tickets are only $30 and include a grandstand reserved game ticket and $15 added value to use toward food or beverage. Lock in your seats now for Blue Moon weekdays at Braves.com slash Blue Moon. Atlanta Braves baseball. We are Braves country. My name's Jeff Criswell. I'm running for U.S. House of Representatives, Georgia's 6th District. I'm a Republican. I'm very conservative. First moved to Atlanta, the Atlanta area in 1984. Within the last three, four years, I really felt a very strong urge that I believe is from God uh, to get involved in politics. So there's 765,000 voters in this district. So I'm going to need to be able to use sort of some more modern strategies. And for that reason, I am reaching out to people. We need your support support. I don't care if it's 10 bucks or a hundred bucks or a thousand, whatever you're comfortable with. Also, if you want to volunteer, we could absolutely use you for a volunteer. And finally, a sign out in a yard is worth its weight in gold. If you want to put a sign up, go over to jeffcriswell.com. That's Jeff, J-E-F-F, Criswell, C-R-I-S-W-E-L-L.com. By all means, we we want to partner with you because we can win this district. This message is paid for by Jeff for Georgia 6. Yeah, and vote for this guy to get rid of that Lucy McSnotty Snot Snot who tried to get me fired and had a press release done by the company that had hired me in radio a few years ago. And they put on a press release, national press release, saying we do not agree with this Kim Peterson broadcaster uh, who is a disgrace and uh, offensive to a United States congresswoman. She put her staff to try to get me fired. And she damn near did. And she got me suspended, you know, all kinds of trouble and all kinds of stuff because I was a talk radio host who didn't believe, didn't, didn't agree with. Oh my God, that's Lucy McBath going after the free press, the talk show host that she didn't like, and the company president, the corporation president, agreed with her and banned me, and then attacked me uh, uh, publicly in a press release. <laughs> oh man, I'd like to. Well, butter. Uh, Four fifty-two. Here's Three Dog Night. I actually never liked them, but around the band and all that stuff, I should have uh, liked them when I did not pick that theme song <laughs> fifty years ago. Whatever. Uh, Three Dog Night, nineteen seventy-one, began the six-week run at number one with "Joy to the World," their second U.S. number one hit, number twenty-four in Britain. What was their first one? If uh, "Joy to the World" was number their second hit. The hell was her first hit? I wonder. I should have looked at. It. I didn't have that. This is a flounder thing, so I didn't get it till today. One, one. Oh, one is the loneliest number. Yeah, that could be. That's maybe my... that was it. Yeah, probably. Hey, and... you know who wrote that song, uh, "Joy to the World"? I do not. Hoyt Axton. Really? Hoyt, the baseball player? Uh, no kidding. No, Hoyt Axton, the country guy, big old country oh, dude. I, I'm singing a Hoyt Songwriter. Wilhelm. I'm sorry, I'm singing a Hoyt Wilhelm. Yeah, I got He you. was in Gremlins, too. He was an actor. Oh, well, here you are. Uh, 453, Kimmer, Pete, and Falounder, 404-741-1230. Why aren't they, uh, has there been preemptory challenges in the Trump case? I'd really like to know if there are some. Sorry, just for the record. A uh, quick birthday note. Oh, <laughs> Olivia Hussey. Olivia Hussey, 73, gorgeous brunette, Norma Bates in Psycho 4, but she was Juliet... In the 1968 movie version of Romeo and Juliet, oh man, she's a squeezer. She's a, she's a, just a sweet, soft, uh, just a, like a Mother Earth. And you just want to squeeze her. You just want to go and put your arms around her and just squeeze her all over. 
All right, we, we lost Pete again. <laughs> Hold on, Flounder. I think we just lost no, he's, Pete. No, he's here. Okay, I, I'm sorry. What are you saying? One of the most beautiful faces I've ever seen on a movie screen. Yeah, 1968, Romeo and Juliet. Olivia Hussey is now 73. Well, good for her. And uh, let's see, quick historical note here, if you don't mind. Oh, here we go, uh, Flounder. In uh, 1937, we American audiences heard this noise for the first time. Right here, we heard it. We never heard it before, and we're never going to hear it again, because it's gone now forever. Hey, what's the matter with you anyway? Don't you even know a rabbit when you see one? Huh? It's true, Doc. I'm a rabbit, all right. Would you like to shoot me now or wait till you get home? Shoot him now! Shoot him now! <laughs> Daffy Duck. Hey, we can't forget check it, Dad. Daffy Duck made his debut in 1937 in Porky's Duck Hunt. Daffy Duck. And was that Mel Blanc? And he did all those things. There oh, a couple yeah. of guys who did all those things. Mel really, Blanc. really talented. Uh, let's see. 455 already with a camera, Pete and Flounder. I mentioned earlier about the phone thing. My uh, uh, favorite ex-wife, Hoppo, uh, and her husband frequently travel overseas on vacation stuff. They have that, you know, retirement thing where they're together and happy stuff. It's kind of cool. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so now uh, you U.S. tourist named Rene Riemann and his wife Linda went overseas on a short holiday to Switzerland. They used to live there, or they're from there originally, so they went over the thing. Uh, he, he, he talked to his uh, mobile provider. Yeah, let's see who it is. Uh, uh, we'll get here in a second. He talked to his uh, T-Mobile, T-Mobile, and he said, uh, I'm going overseas. Am I all set? They said, yeah, you're all taken care of. All, all your travels, everything's going to be all fine. He said, okay, great. He's been a customer for 30 years. Uh, T-Mobile, he said he was covered. So he went to the Swiss countryside, had magical sights of the trip, sent photo messages to his friends and family. Uh, didn't think any was saying, was texting stuff, uh, putting up the, our daily roaming things. And when he got home from Switzerland and got his T-Mobile bill, he thought, boy, the $143, that's not bad. And then he said, oh, no, oh, uh, wait a minute. And there's a picture of it on social media. The bill was for $143,000. Roaming charges. <laughs> and he called, He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. He, re- he, re- he, he said, I, I, I said, look at the bill. He says, excuse me. Uh, the, he racked up 9.5 gigabyte, GB, whatever the hell that is, gigabytes of data while he was in Europe cost him thousands of dollars a day. Now, uh, 5 to 10 gigabytes is not considered a large, but being not being covered by roaming fees, it runs up thousands really quickly. I, he said, I called the mobile T-Mobile girl, and she put me on hold. She said, I've got to talk to my manager. And she came back, and she said, yeah, this is a good bill. He said, what do, you, what do you mean it's a good bill? She says, well, it's, you know, what you owe us, $143,000. And he said, whoa, you, you told me you were taking it. Anyway, so they eventually figured out, and, and the and T-Mobile said, no, nah, okay, we won't, we'll write it. We're not going to charge it. But again, you know, and my, and my when, when my favorite ex-wife, the one who loved me, went over with Bob, and her husband, and they, and they told us all, don't text me. I'm not going to call you. We're not going to show you pictures till we get home. I mean, roaming charges no. will kill you. Oh, no. Before you go, you go to Verizon. I always go to Verizon's little store and I say, okay, if anything's changed, let me know. I'm going over there for a week. And th- sometimes they take your phone and they go boop, boop, boop and say, okay, you're fine. Others say, don't worry about it. It's, but you need to always tell them yeah. before you go overseas. Right. right. Well, that's why That's why Hoppo said, oh, no, you know, we're telling you now, we're not, you know, we're out. <laughs> don't tell you. But you, you shouldn't have to do that. You I can know, do I anything. Know. Just tell Verizon before you I know. go. I know. Well, I don't have Verizon, so, and I'm not going overseas, so I'm not going to tell anybody anything. Anything. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's probably good for America. <laughs> You're not going overseas. That's probably very good for America. With my attitude these days, <laughs> the ugly American. Some, some is Frenchman, landing. some Frenchman, give me lip at a restaurant someplace. Yeah, that would work out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Four fifty-eight. Uh, I, I like the ones oh, that you go God. there. They, they <laughs> well, say You're, you were late getting here for the wars. I said <laughs> we shouldn't even been there. <laughs> yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> Flounder, what do you got here, sir? Hitler. I've just got to say. Hitler. Hitler, you couldn't make him up. He is the worst human being to ever walk the face of the earth. He's a crazy, evil, racist, narcissistic, serial killer. Just terrible. But (laughs) if I was throwing a dinner party (laughs) and I'd been slaving all day over a hot stove, right, and I was getting everything ready, right, and there was one place left and I had to either invite Hitler or that little girl with food allergies... <laughs> I know who'd ruin that party more. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's enjoying it. How is everything? He's going, yeah, it's yummy, right? I'm going, he's, he's loving it. I'm going, cheers. Like, you, you f- 
Yeah, you do. No. Know about that, right? She's going, I can't eat that. Oh, f no, I'll get, I'll get you some. <laughs> Who wants Ferrero Rocher? Me! Right there. <laughs> Eat them. I'll f off home, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Gervais. <laughs> you know, and I can't, re I can't forget. I, and I always get a big kick out of him when he hosted the Academy, or was it the the uh, Golden Globes? Golden Globes. And he roasted him. I mean, it was hysterical. I'm uh, just hysterical. I mean, God bless him, you know. Uh, F it was so rough, yeah. you felt bad for the actors. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they got what they deserved. Uh, the FAA has grounded an entire airline because of the weight of the passengers and dragging a dead body into a bank to get a new loan? Mm, good try. Uh, coming up on 5 o'clock with a cover feet and flounder on 106.3 for Humpity Humpty Hump Day. Look out. WFOM and W292EV Marietta, a Dickey Broadcasting Station. This hour is presented by Lee Brandt Jewelry and Watches. This is a Fox News alert. An impeachment trial ends before it really begins. I'm Lisa Brady. Madam President, we've set a very unfortunate precedent here. Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell, after both articles of impeachment against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, failed on party line votes that they were unconstitutional. This means that the Senate can ignore, in effect, the House's impeachment. It doesn't make any difference whether our friends on the other side thought he should have been impeached or not. He was. Today's action could give Democrats some cover in the border security debate by avoiding a vote to dismiss the charges against Mayorkas. There's a needle to be threaded there, and, and this is the, the kind of parliamentary you know cocktail that uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer came up with to say we're not going to vote to dismiss the trial. We're going to vote to rule that these articles of impeachment are unconstitutional. Fox's Chad Pergram on Capitol Hill. And Republicans are going to beat this horse all the way to November because the polling shows at the border and Mayorkas, that is a lightning rod issue with the electorate this fall. Republicans accuse Mayorkas of willfully failing to enforce immigration laws. A White House spokesperson accuses Republicans of wasting time on baseless political stunts instead of pursuing actual solutions. The Columbia University president tells lawmakers the school has taken steps to address anti-Semitism. Jewish students say at Columbia they have faced anti-Semitic taunting and threats. Calls for for the destruction of Israel and speaking invitations from some student groups to foreign terrorist organizations that maintain the university has fallen well short of its duty to address all of this. Fox's Rich Edson on Capitol Hill while the president was testifying on the Hill. Pro-Palestinian protesters set up tents on campus calling for divestiture. America's listening to Fox News. Don't let everyday aches and pains keep you from living your best life. I don't think I really understood what people meant when they talked about pain until I started feeling it myself. Start feeling better every day with Relief Factor, a daily supplement designed to support your body's fight against aches and pains. Not only do I move better without pain, I just feel better. Created by doctors, Relief Factor uses a unique formula of natural ingredients that target four metabolic pathways to address pain. Relief Factor doesn't just mask aches and pains, it helps reduce or even eliminate them. Today, I do the things I love and it doesn't occur to me to think about pain. You can feel the difference all day, every day. Join the over 1 million people who have tried Relief Factor's three-week quick start kit. It's only $19.95 and comes with our feel better or your money back guarantee. Visit relieffactor.com or call 1-800-4-RELIEF. That's 1-800-4-RELIEF. Rough, rough. <laughs> Look out, it's only me. 
Don't be scared. We'll be a little scared. It's only the Kimmer 503 with Pete Davis and Flounder at the controls on 106.3. Happy hump day. Beautiful day in the news. 80-something again, I guess. And just beautiful weather. Or another couple of days, apparently. And then maybe a little cooler and different, but it's uh, feels like summer. It's been raining for three hours up here. Are you serious? Oh, it's sunny and uh, yes. it's like 82 or something. <laughs> 68 and rainy. I'll yeah. be damned. Well, there you go. Uh, and again, Pete Dave, you missed it. On, uh, did you put it on Facebook? There's uh, the uh, woodchuck climbing a tree up in a tree. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I've never seen I used to shoot him as a teenager over to help the, uh, the farmers so they, the horses didn't break their legs in the woodchuck holes. No, seriously. I've never seen a woodchuck do anything but go underground. Uh, and hide in the weed. I mean, I, I, I couldn't believe it. There was a woodchuck in that tree, climbing the, up like in that Spider-Man tree. like Spider-Man up there. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't I? Just unbelievable. Uh, coming up, we'll play the little Kimmer bingo card, because I'm definitely going to talk about that. I, I Again, after a bad a, a day, this my the thing with the thing. I'm, I, a happy memory for me is a, is a little thing and a celebration of, uh, of, of a certain automobile and a reason why. Um, and a rem- In fact, I'll, 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 I'll tell this before I forget it. Uh, Neil was on, I guess, yesterday morning, and they repeated again this morning at a different hour when Neil Bortz is talking to our uh, beautiful morning bastards, the morning crew. And um, and so and he was talking about uh, the time when he was working at the, uh, I think it was the post office. I think he and his wife were working at the, the post office together. And they, yeah, that's what it was, working at the post office. We just met, talked about that. And he and his wife together working in the post office, I think, together. And, and he said, uh, boy, he was uh, he would he would get those, ma- he was in charge of uh, putting the packages into a certain chute and the certain thing, and he was whipping them in there and he was going through and then he said finally he said one great and he did kind of a voice like Uncle Remus and he said this great big supervisor came up and said uh, son you're going to have to stop uh, being so fast on the job my boy uh, you're really kind of making the rest of us look bad and if you keep doing it like this they're not going to be giving us any overtime because they're going to think we don't need overtime so he was told to slow the hell down and the truth of the matter I'm going to talk about a, a, an old prep school buddy of mine and the car thing is coming up and I worked uh, for some summertime jobs for a couple of years, he and I and a bunch of our friends worked for his father who owned a factory that made uh, parts and fabric and things for automobiles, uh, including Ford Motor Company. And anyway, so and I, we worked as handyman. We, were, we painted, you know, workshops and we swept and picked up stuff and we, oh God, we did, we drove tractors to do things and pick up lumber and nail. I mean, we, we did every handyman jobs and maintenance man handyman jobs as kids in, in prep school summertime stuff. And we, 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 we used to show off. I, I remember thinking and uh, we, we were so fat. Pete and I, the, the, he and I, they worked as uh, partners together. And we would go flying. I mean, man, we were, when we came in to do something, bing, bang, power. And all the people there were going, what the hell are they doing? And, they, and in fact, the owner, his father, and this is a true story, his father came to me. When I was over at his house one night after, after whatever, summertime, uh, just hanging around. And his father said, uh, just for the record, you have an awful lot of uh, unhappy people at my company who are telling you to slow the hell down because you're making them look bad. I mean, this was the work of the factory life back then as kids. And, it's, and Neil Bortz had the same thing going. I don't know whether that's a thing now with mo- modern work ec- ethic or not. I don't know. Anyway, uh, 507 by the Kipper Pete and Flounder. Holy crap, it's sports coming up. N- another Flounder's funny, uh, funny coming up, sponsored by Nucky's Hoagies, our, uh, our, our uh, subsister girls. The uh, uh, oh, A couple of quick things. Uh, we know, I guess the impeachment trial is, is done, uh, Mayorkas, which is fine. Absolutely fine. They, uh, because of George's two senators and everybody else, the Senate did not have the power to uh, convict him. And again, Mayorkas was impeached. To be impeached means to be uh, convicted in the House. It doesn't mean you're, uh, I mean, to be impeached means you, you are convicted of being impeached, but you're not convicted of the crime. In other words, you, you are, your impeachment is sent to the next chamber, which is the Senate, acting as your judge and jury. The Senate, just like Donald Trump, voted against impeachment. So he was impeached, but he was not convicted. That Trump was impeached twice, but not convicted twice. And today's thing, uh, not convicted, and that's fine. We should make it a laughing stock, so every, we should impeach everybody so that you know, 5 or 10, 20, 50, 100 years from now, they're going to look back and say, oh, man, those guys were nuts back then. That really didn't mean anything because it's the only way to look at it after what they did to Donald Trump. Who may be a jerk, but he didn't deserve two impeachments and have them go against him with the Department of Justice and all that stuff and the media and everybody's social. Anyway, so we got that going for us. Now, speaking of liberal stuff, this just in, uh, breaking news. I'm pretty proud I'm getting this on my iPad. Let's see if it works when I scroll up. And it's working. It's working. Here we go. U.S. Attorneys General are calling out Bank of America for discriminatory behavior, condemning their debanking efforts targeting customers for their religious and political beliefs. 
One of the 15 attorneys general is from Indiana. Todd Roy, uh, Rokita, I believe it is, signed the letter saying you're a pattern of taking corporate America by storm for your discrimination. Uh, this idea that their own political view is going to foist on the rest of us are simply cowards and can't stand up to the socialist pressure that's being put on them. You can't just pick and choose. It's kind of some of the basis of our discrimination laws. Uh, two of the uh, founders of this project looking into this stuff say uh, talk about an experience they had uh, with a, uh, they had the organization requires, uh, come on iPad, here we go, requires international travel focusing on training pastors who may not have access to formal education. Uh, let's see, they got a letter from the bank saying their account's going to be restricted in 21 days and closed in 30 days. And he said, we had people all over the world, we travel a lot, need these cards in the field. Uh, the bank failed to provide a reason other than the organization was engaged in a type of business that they had chosen not to service. He went on to mention that they still don't know anything as to exactly why. When you swipe a credit card or put a credit card in the ATM, you expect it to be processed. And the argument you have the bank and the uh, late in 2020 Bank of America told us, say, we're not going to do that anymore. Uh, the actions of um, one of America's top banks, the reason why their anti-law trusts uh, exist across the United States, what they're doing here is discriminatory. They're not allowing them to use their card for certain businesses. Relief uh, factors of religion should not be a factor. And Bank of America denied the claim, saying, oh, we provide service to everybody. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we know, but we, we're on to you. <laughs> yeah. It's Chinese social credit they're trying to push on us, too. And they're afraid. It's like, it's, it's, it came up the other day. Uh, all these people talking about def uh, talking about uh, people supporting Trump and other things. What about the businesses that gave all those millions of dollars to Black Lives Matter and Antifa? I mean, they were cowards. They were they were chicken. They were afraid to be closed down by protesters, and they were afraid, just like you know, everybody else is just afraid to do anything. Afraid, afraid, afraid. Instead of standing up for what you know, if you could only if you could make decisions based on what is best. If a congressman or a senator could make a decision based on what's best for America, if that were really the criteria, if that were really it. Huh? Like, What's well, 1930s Germany? You had yeah. one group of people in the streets terrorizing everybody else and being bullies, and the government was too weak and ineffectual to stand up to them. Yeah. And by the way, we uh, uh, in earlier today, Lindsey Graham, South Carolina, has got a social media thing going. Department of Homeland Security. Guess what? They have told Lindsey Graham, the Department of Homeland Security, that in fact, Lake and Riley's murderer was paroled into America illegally because the processing center in El Paso was too crowded. They confirmed to Lindsey Graham, has found out more. They confirmed to me the man charged with his murder was paroled. Her murder was paroled into the country illegally because of the capacity at the El Paso Center. He was not granted parole because he provided a significant benefit to the country or that he had a humanitarian need as the law requires. And he was not granted parole for either of those reasons because it wasn't true. But they gave him one anyway. A so-called free parole to come into the country because they were too crowded. So they said, well, just bring him in. He had also, uh, now, uh, Lake and Riley was found murdered in February after going to UGA and in, in a nursing school, Augusta, uh, Augusta's campus in Athens. Um, uh, police have charged this guy with malice murder, felony murder, aggravated battery, aggravated assault, false imprisonment, kidnapping, hindering, and I'm on and on and on. He had been caught in New York and let go. I mean, this whole, this freaking immigration thing, you can't tell me any of this is right. You can, nobody can say this is a good policy. I just and Mayorkas got away with it uh, for being impeached for 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 allowing this. He said, "I should have said the first day." Said, "No, Mr. President, I can't do that. You can't have me open up all the border, all these people, and lie about those guys on horsemen pretending they're whipping people and uh, treating immigrants that way. I can't do that." But he did it. He's been doing this since day one because he's a pimp. He's a political pussy. And he's been carrying out the orders, and this is exactly what happened. And it's because of him and President Crime Family, Joe Potato Head, that Lake and Riley is dead. And all those other people from Fentanyl are dead. It's their fault. They did it on purpose. They wanted those people to come in here. And with all those other people came the bad people. What was it, 7 million now we're thinking? Oh, they're still coming in. Yeah, oh, there's, Trump absolutely. says it's 15 million. Yeah, I, 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 I thought 12, but that is, who knows? And again, it's not because they're, they were, they're supposed to be seeking asylum for their torturous past in their home country, which is not true for any of them. They all come in wanting a job. They want work. They want a better country. I don't blame you. But come and sign the book and wait for it's your turn. You can't just say, I want, I want to come to your country because I think you're better than I am and you walk in. 
<laughs> well, I, we're seeing more and more. They're not coming for jobs. They're coming for handouts and easy pickings well, for, for criminals. I know, but that, in other words, that, that's what they say is a, a, a better life. They say they want a better life. They're lying because they want to rob it. They'll do anything they can to get out of their own country. But instead of saying they need asylum or something like that, they're saying that they, they're looking for a better life. They admit they're looking for a better life, which is not the reason they're supposed to come in for free um, automatically, but no waiting. 514. All right, hold on. Pete Davis, only got a little thing. And we got Flounder's Funnies and uh, Happy Music, and it's uh, Wednesday, and that's a good side with a Kimber Pete and Flounder right here. <laughs> Hey, it's Rhino from The Morning Extra, getting your weekday morning started from 6 to 10 a.m. When you don't get your way and you decide to go to Portland, light a federal building on fire. That's a threat to democracy. Setting up an autonomous zone in Seattle, that's a threat to democracy. Going and standing in front of a court case and using mob mentality to try to change a ruling, that's a threat to democracy. The Morning Extra, 6 to 10 a.m. on Extra 106.3 FM and the Extra app. Hey, sandwich lovers, today is your lucky day. There's a whole new way to roll for lunch or dinner delight with Nucky's Hoagies in the Roswell Corner Shopping Center. Now open, Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell is family owned and operated by the subsisters, Stacy and Shannon, whose love language is food and Nucky's Hoagies, their passion. When you bite into a Nucky's Hoagie, you'll taste the difference. The softest hoagie rolls ever, along with hunger quenching sandwich combinations. Make Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell on Woodstock Road your new favorite spot for lunch or dinner. Hey, Dad, can I ask you something? Sure. How do you know when you're in love? Well, you can't stop thinking about him. Your heart races sometimes, and you just want to be with him every moment of the day. Dad, I think I'm in love then. Got a picture? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yep. I remember my first Subaru, too. There are so many reasons to love a new Subaru from Subaru of Gwinnett, like standard symmetrical all-wheel drive on most models, top-rated gas mileage, and technology and safety that will give you the warm and fuzzies. Like the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek, with 182 horsepower and up to 120 cubic feet of interior space. Or the 2024 Subaru Outback, built to take you off the beaten path with up to 9.5 inches of ground clearance. Add in their amazing staff and incredible service department, and you'll understand why love is what makes a Subaru a Subaru. But the only way to know it's the one is to come in for a test drive. Subaru of Gwinnett, Satellite Boulevard in Duluth, or start shopping online at SubaruofGwinnett.com. Is this the year you want to grow your business? Do you want to expand your team? Build a new office? Hey, it's Tug, and I want to tell you about First Liberty Building and Loan. Aren't you exhausted by going to lenders, building a relationship, and a week later, you're dealing with a new person? You won't have to with First Liberty Building and Loan. The Frost family has been helping businesses grow since the 90s, and they can help you too. They know the patterns, they know the ebbs and flows, and they know business. Now the Frost family wants to know you. FirstLibertyGA.com. Buying a building, building a building, buying a franchise, or expanding. Reach out and spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a fit for them and if they're a fit for you. FirstLibertyGA.com. By the way, if you're a young banker and you want to work with a team that's faith-friendly with a culture of excellence, First Liberty might be a good match. Reach out to First Liberty Building and Loan at FirstLibertyGA.com. That's FirstLibertyGA.com. Lee Brand Jewelry and Watch Company, where quality and value make the difference. Locally owned and located in Sandy Springs, offering you the finest selection of unique diamonds, sapphires, rubies, and emerald jewelry, as well as other fine gemstones. Lee Brand Jewelry and Watches has been servicing Rolex watches for over 30 years, and their Rolex trained watchmaker will service your watch in their state of the art Rolex service center in their store. Lee Brand uses only genuine Rolex parts, and their estimates are free. Drop by Lee Brand in the Trader Joe's Shopping Center in Sandy Springs or visit LeeBrand.com. This is Dan Watkins with All Four Seasons. We've always been Atlanta's best at installing and servicing garage and entry doors, but you would be surprised at how many windows we've installed as well. So we're proud to announce a new division, All Four Seasons Windows. We now have the ability to make sure every opening in your house is safe, energy efficient, and looks darn good. So give us a call today to schedule your free sales consultation. Find out how you can decrease your energy bills and increase the beauty and value of your home with All Four Seasons Garage, Entry Doors, and Windows. 
Spring is the perfect time to bring a group out to a game at Truist Park to enjoy great weather and Braves baseball. Come experience the brand new private Jim Beam Bourbon Decks located on the lower level down the left field line. The Jim Beam Bourbon Decks have a great view of the field while incorporating a private setting and bar access for your group to easily socialize while you cheer on the Braves. Visit Braves.com slash hospitality to snag this amazing new space for your crew this season. Ozzy's punished another one. They get 2 nothing Braves. And come experience another brand new space in right field, the Blue Moon Beer Garden, offering the largest variety of Molson Coors beer options and unique food pairings. And there's a special ticket offer for any weekday game during the regular season. Tickets are only $30 and include a grandstand reserved game ticket and $15 added value to use toward food or beverage. A limited number of tickets are available for this special offer. So lock in your seats now at Braves.com slash Blue Moon. Atlanta Braves baseball. We are Braves country. All right, I got 519, Kim Repeat and Paul Lounder coming up. We'll talk about how Britain wants to ban smoking for everybody. Yes, and being suspended from high school for using the word illegal alien, all that stuff, and nicknames, nicknames, schmicknames. Holy crap, it's sports with Pete Davis. Marcelo Zuna homered. Ronald Acuna hit his first long wall of the season, as we hear Marshall. right here. Let's get something going. Ronald puts a charge in one to center field. The bomb going back, still going. He's at the 409 mark. That's off the batter's eye. There's some offense. Two to one, Atlanta. And Ronald has his first home run of the year. <laughs> Joe Simpson with the call there. Haven't heard Joe in a while. I've not heard yeah. Joe in a while. Good for him. That's great to see. Max Freed pitched five innings, a seven-hit ball, gave up three earned runs, walking four and striking out two. Right now, they're in the bottom of the tenth in Houston. Braves up five to four. The Astros had that ghost runner on second, so we'll see what happens. Oh, I, I forget about that go- that new new formats now with uh, tie games and stuff. That's what just gave us the lead. That's how we got. Yeah. Is that what ha- a guy in second? You get a single in your. Yeah. It's not new. It's been going on for yeah. years now. It's not too, well, as new yeah, as we anyway. thought. Ozzy Albies will miss at least two weeks with a fractured great toe. That's right. I said great toe. Oh. We have big toes. Ozzy has a great toe. That's oh. how he, they described it yesterday. Oh, great my. toe. Great toe. Never heard yes. that before. Mm. Uh, it's gotten to the point that influential sports journalists and Jeff Passan and Ken Rosenthal mm. are reporting that MLB has to do something about incompetent umpire Angel Hernandez. Oh, my God. Just two weeks into the season, already has a highlight or low light reel of egregious calls behind home plate, balls and strikes that would make blind Willie McTell cry. They this showed guy, video the other day popped up on my phone. Everybody's got, I mean, this isn't just sports thing. Everybody's getting this this video stuff of him. He missed it by a foot. I mean, it was uh, they weren't even he called three strikes in a row, and the guy you couldn't even see him. They were so far outside the plate. I think he's God. doing it on purpose now because he knows no one will touch him. Well, he, I, he sued MLB before. Yeah. Yeah. They're afraid of him. And the, the broadcaster's in the booth, and this one last time he says, well, I guess Angel's got dinner reservations early tonight. I mean, they're all making fun of him on the air, too. I mean, it's, it's just a joke. unbelievable. That, that, that and the God. uniform thing that's going on oh, this year, Lord, which yeah. is an absolute joke. Yeah. I mean, this this idiot, Rob Manford, running baseball, is the stupidest guy this side of Gary Bettman of the NHL. The, it's the owners are keeping him. How long does he get these contracts? So the owners are asking know. for it with this stuff. Uh, ESPN.com has a huge story today claiming Bill Belichick was blindsided by the news that the Falcons had hired Raheem Morris as their head coach. Bill thought he was a shoe in for the job after more than one interview. But ESPN reports that none of the Falcons' brain trust even had Belichick in their top three list of candidates. A source close to the Falcons' hiring process said, quote, he was essentially voted off the island, end quote. One friend of Belichick says he doesn't think Bill will ever coach again unless it's for Jerry Jones or the Cowboys. And the ESPN.com story has a source that says Patriots owner Robert Kraft warned Falcons owner Arthur Blank he could not trust Bill Belichick. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's going to get ugly. Cool. The Hawks in Chicago tonight for the play-in game against the Bulls. For dinner, may I suggest yes. the Girl and the Goat restaurant on ah. West Randolph Street, oh, right. where Chef Stephanie serves up innovative small plates of tasty morsels. Ah, I remember many yeah. times walking down the streets of the Windy City. and It says here, uh, just had an alert on my phone here from yeah. the Daily Mail, that A.J. Simon... He's about 24, 25 years old. He should be drafted to the NFL. He just passed away Whoa. right here before the NFL draft. Don't know anything else about that, but uh, oh, that's goodness. interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Raptors, Jonte Parter, has been banned for the NBA for life 
after an investigation yeah. revealed he had disclosed confidential information to bettors and limited his participation in at least one game while he's with Toronto and bet on NBA games while playing in the G League. The NBA launched that investigation as a reporter in late March after sportsbooks noticed irregular betting on the over-under on the Reserve Center stats in two Raptors games. In both of those games, he exited after playing only a few minutes, saying he was injured. Uh, the investigation found that Port revealed info about his own health to a known sports better uh, ahead of the games against the Kings. Another better privy to the info placed an $80,000 same-game parlay bet that oh. featured unders on Porter's statistics. He would have won over a million dollars. Porter played three minutes before leaving the game. The bet was placed at DraftKings was not paid because they thought it was not on the up and up. Uh, what an uh, idiot. Well, wait a minute. So this guy, all of a sudden, he bets $80,000 on an over-under and the guy's gone in three minutes? And gee, that sounds a little suspicious. Uh -huh. What an uh, he could he could have won a million dollars. They don't think maybe there's something, something fishy in there. Oh my mm. God! Mm. <laughs> well, see, Lord. that's what we hear in the Atlanta Police Department. Call a clue. That's a clue. Yes, a clue. Uh, yes. The league investigation revealed Porter placed at least 13 bets on NBA games using somebody else's account, uh, ranging from up to uh, like twenty-two thousand dollars. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver says he's shocked, shocked, shocked. to hear there is gambling in this establishment, <laughs> and immediately requests. His uh, winnings. Here's your winning, sir. <laughs> Flounder yeah. just said that uh, the Braves have won five to Excellent. four. Braves win. And ten they innings. swept the Astros. Man, good. They're like six and fourteen in last place. The, wow. the Astros, man, that guy's going to be fired. Espada. Well, he's really screwing up. Believe mm -hmm. uh, a man has been charged in federal court in Illinois in the transport of millions of dollars worth of Masters merchandise mm. and memorabilia stolen from Augusta National Golf Club. Let me say, say right now, I am not that man. No. How did they steal stuff from Augusta? It's not like there's no security around there. It's been going on for years, Re apparently. Yeah, Richard Golbinski accused of transporting the items across state lines down to Florida, knowing it had been stolen, converted, and taken by fraud. The items were taken from the famous golf club and other locations beginning in 2009. For many fans, the chance to buy the exclusive merchandise that's not officially sold online is part of the Masters experience, as I found out Sunday when I walked out of yeah. there for almost half a grand of stuff in I my know. pocket. <laughs> <laughs> what we, I, I laughed at the guy going in. He said, look, I don't, well, just under 1000 And we, <laughs> yeah. And then I got almost 500 Well, so ironically, anyway. the pimento cheese sandwich may be ten, but the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the sweaters are $800. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, 100% cotton for that t shirt oh, no, I had yesterday. Oh, oh, it was really nice. There. Very good stuff. Okay, what would you say is the most coveted master souvenir recently? Recently? Recently. Uh, uh, mm, well, something about Tiger Woods, I guess, probably. Let's a, just say. A divot from Tiger Woods' t shot or something? No, it's about. It, it, if you put it on the ground, it would come up to about your knee, a little higher than your knee. It's not light, it's not lightweight. It's either plastic or wood. Uh, you really got me stumped here, sir. A gnome garden statue. Oh, which I've heard about these. In 2016, and Bill Sheehan told me because you see people walking around, they yeah. lug them around the co course. Yeah. They used to buy several, yeah. and they'd sell them on eBay for thousands. Yeah. I don't know how much they go for, and they limited it to one per customer. Now, well, that's right, garden gnome. I, I remember seeing a, a picture of those things, and they're hugely popular. Now they're going to be even more popular, more expensively, showing up for ten thousand on eBay. I but know. whatever. Uh, and they got the logo edge cups. I got a couple. I'm a green and white one, which you get when you get the lemonade and, and water yeah. and the beer and everything. Yeah. And people sell those on eBay. Well, I kept well, all my stuff. I when I was down here with Bill Sheehan, I kept everything I have. I've got. I still have. Why would you? And you gave me stuff. I bought me. I mean, that's some master stuff. Maybe that's where your fortune is, Kimmer. Well, that's it. It's right <laughs> there in the stuff. kitchen, right there, <laughs> the kitchen oh. counter. That cup is right there. <laughs> and by that, by the way, tell Mike the engineer that I have him something, and I forgot and left it in the car yesterday. So next week, I'll, when I see him i'll give him his little prize he's listening now so oh, there you go all right mike well you got something coming there by the way by the way i have a bottle of master's water which i filled oh. up at the at the water fountain there yeah so i have a bottle of master's water you think how much would you think i could get on ebay for ninety dollars ninety dollars okay we'll find out i'm just kidding i'm not gonna do that no you wouldn't the that. u.s justice I'll department do it for you. Yeah, you'll have to say, give it to you. You're never, you're never going to be allowed back in. So 30 yeah. bucks. Give you 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Uh, the Justice Department has agreed to pay around 100 victims of disgraced former Team USA Dr. Larry Nasser $100 million Ooh. for the FBI's failures to properly investigate reports of his sexual assaults against America's top gymnasts. The FBI's failures in the case well documented back in 2021 at a Senate hearing. Director Christopher Wray, a good friend of Perjurer. yours. 
Yeah. Apolo- allegedly pa- apologized to survivors of Nasser's abuse, saying it was inexcusable that his agents had their own chance to stop this monster and failed. Yeah. Well, under his leadership, yeah. just like they failed with the Hunter Biden laptop, with the uh, Russian collusion, with a girl peeing on Everything. him, and the, uh, the Ritz Carlton. I mean, come on. All that stuff is FBI, and they didn't let it go on purpose. Like they had meetings with people who go to school board meetings and complain okay. and put them on a list. I'm okay. sorry. All right, go ahead. All right. <laughs> a woman who accused former Major League pitcher Trevor Bauer of sexual assault has been indicted by a grand jury in Arizona on felony charges of fraudulent schemes and theft by extortion. Yeah. Darcy Adana Esamonu knowingly did obtain a benefit from Trevor Anthony Bauer by means of fraudulent pretenses, representation, promises, and material omissions. Trevor Bauer is still blackballed from MLB, not officially, but He's not got a job. And Caitlin Clark's first news conference with the Indiana Fever today got off to a creepy start in Indianapolis. Oh. Greg Doyle of the Indy Star asked her about her heart hand gesture that she makes. Yeah. She says, I do that to my family after every game. Yeah. And Doyle replied, okay, well, start doing it to me, and we'll get along just fine. Uh, oh, doesn't she have a boyfriend, very no- well-known yeah. boyfriend, fiancé type guy that uh, talks about her yeah. all the time? Yeah, well, that's kind of creepy. Even Kevin Spacey called up to say that was creepy. <laughs> yeah, as a reporter, you. yeah, that's not. Uh, uh, on this date, 1869, the first pro baseball game ever played. The Cincinnati Red Stockings beat the Cincinnati Amateurs 24-15. to And here's Nate's joke of the day. Are you ready? I'm ready for another Nate's joke. Hey, sis, did I tell you about the touchdown I made? No. No. And I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, ho. Uh, birthday, uh, Boomer Esiason. His first name, Norman. Former NFL quarterback, Monday Night Football commentator, now on CBS pregame Norman. and replaced Don Imus in 2007 on The Fan in New York. Uh, Boomer is 63. And uh, now it says here, I didn't know this was correct. It says here that in 1947, Pete, that Jackie Robinson laid down a bunt for his first major league hit with the Dodgers. Oh, good for him. I didn't know. I had no idea. Anyway, uh, 5.30 and uh, Holy Crap at Sports uh, with Pete Davis. Thanks so much. And uh, Flounder's Funny is coming up. And the news and things, including uh, uh, President uh, Crime Family uh, Potato Head, is now getting involved with the salary of that Caitlin Clark chick and getting rid of all smoking in Britain, making it illegal. Anyway, we'll see what's happening. 5.30 right here. Kimmer, Pete, and Flounder. The legend Neil Bortz is only on Extra 106.3. Hey, it's Tug, and here's what you missed from the Talkmaster. I mean, I cannot bring myself to vote for a Democrat. I just can't do it. And that's why in most of the last 10 presidential elections, I voted Libertarian. Catch Neil's commentary every day on Extra 106.3 or listen anytime on the Extra 106.3 app. Hi, I'm Mark Beckham with Atlanta Ramjack. We specialize in only foundation repair. What makes Atlanta Ramjack special is the crews. Our crews are the most experienced people in the industry. Foundation Repairs has many aspects. We do helical piers, hydraulically driven piles. We do polyfoam injection. We pressure grout. We do carbon fiber reinforcement. There's multiple solutions to foundation repairs. If you see any signs of foundation issues, please contact us at atlantaramjack.com. Hey, Atlanta, it's Mark from the Safe House. And now, the security riddle of the day. What's less secure than a fake say from a furniture big box store. Joe Biden's fake border policy, of course. But hey, there is good news. This time next year, Joe Biden will not be president. So drop right at Atlanta Safe House and check out the largest selection of safes in the Southeast. Build a wall around your valuables with a safe from the Safe House. We have certified delivery crews to install your safe. With over 30 years in the safe business, the Safe House is the place to buy safe in Georgia. So go to atlantasafehouse.com. Returning to Metro Atlanta, April 26th to the 28th, the Mitsubishi Electric Classic, presented by Venture, is Georgia's only PGA Tour Champions event. Enjoy local craft brews and scenic views of the par 3 11th hole and an exciting atmosphere at the perch. Pick your favorite hole to watch along the ropes or find public seating throughout the course. Children 15 and under receive complimentary tickets with purchase by an adult. Join the party at TPC Sugarloaf in Duluth, Georgia. Tickets available at MitsubishiElectricClassic.com slash tickets. 
Neil Bortz here. Maybe you've already taken the steps to improve your health, maybe save your life. You're using a CPAP for your sleep apnea. I've been using one for well over 20 years. So right now I'm here to tell you about a source for CPAPs and CPAP supplies here in the Atlanta area. CPAPs, etc. They're in Alpharetta. They have whatever you need. Roddy and Sharon are your CPAP experts and they'll ship nationwide. More information, CPAPs, ET My name is Jamie High, and I have worked for Bruce Hagen for 14 years. Why do I work for Bruce? Because he truly cares. He cares about me, he cares about my family, and he cares about each and every one of his clients. Family is important to him, and he never makes me choose between my family and work. He values me as an employee, but also as a person. At our firm, we are all family, and I wouldn't want it any other way. I am Jamie, and I've worked for Bruce Hagen for 14 years because he's the best. Hagen-Law.com. What companies would you want to work for? Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks which companies are a force for good. Companies like Bank of America, which just earned the prestigious Just Capital 2024 seal. Bank of America is ranked number one in the banking industry and number one for their ongoing commitment to workers, offering best-in-class benefits, including a minimum wage of $25 an hour by 2025. Visit JustCapital.com to learn how a just business is a better business. Furnished by Just Capital. (laughs) This song always meant a lot to the Kimmer. (laughs) You ever did? 1970, performing at the White House for President Richard Nixon, Johnny Cash was asked to perform Oki from Muskogee. But Johnny Cash said no because it's not his song. That had been a Merle Haggard song, of course. So instead, Johnny Cash sang his number one hit, Boy Named Sue. A little flounder. <laughs> what a story, this guy. <laughs> You know, his voice is really, you know, he has trouble kind of getting it out. But he's, he's a whole thing. Johnny Cash. Good Lord. Hey, excuse me. Yeah. Are you are you criticizing the great American no, icon? No, I'm Johnny saying he, he's got a whole thing. He's, he's There's never, there's not a guy like him. I mean, he really has a whole different yeah. thing. Talking his songs and singing. I mean, it's just, he has a whole different thing. I really, it's really cool. And I remember, I remember the uh, um, uh, uh, Columbo episode where he played a murderer, <laughs> you know, and a, a oh. pilot, a Mary airplane pilot murder remember his wife i think or something <laughs> i'll tell you one of the best tv movies you'll ever see was murder in cayuta county where he played the the sheriff, the sheriff next door yeah. <laughs> and andy andy uh, griffith was the, the yeah. bad sheriff i'll be damned yeah <laughs> johnny cash anyway he played boy named sue and everybody was happy uh birthday list includes adam mckay i don't know the name he's 56 but he directed and co-wrote anchorman talladega knights Step Brothers, and the other guys with will ferrell Adam McKay then ditched Will to become an Oscar winner by co-writing The Big Short, which he also directed. Adam McKay's 56 years old today. And I uh, see a history thing. Everybody got a history thing. Oh, Bob, Pete, I forgot a little sports history here for you, sir. In 1929, Babe Ruth married Claire Hodgson, a former member of the Zigfield Follies. 1929, they got married at 5.45 in the morning to avoid fans who were expecting to crash the event when they thought it was going to be held at 6.30 in the morning. When asked where they were going on their honeymoon, Babe Ruth famously said, to the ballpark. And he hit a home run on his wedding day in 1929. Babe Ruth. Uh, For the lady he loved. Ah. Must be nice. Second wife. I Second. Think. Well, well, well. Sure. You know. <laughs> uh, and on this day in 1521, Martin Luther was excommunicated from the Roman Catholic Church and founded the denomination now well known as the Martins. So it's kind of a special. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 so I'm a Martin. Is that what I am? Oh, okay. 
some the kid's going to put that on his, on his history test, just like this one. In uh, 1492, Christopher Columbus, a disease-causing, plague-inducing, genocidal maniac and explorer, signed a deal with Spain to find a passageway to India and Asia. And in 1493, Columbus sailed the deep blue sea. So that's kind of the way there's never those two things there. Uh, 537, Kimber, Pete, and Flounder, 5 o'clock hour, sponsored by our good friends at Lee Brandt Jewelers, where a luxury jewelry and watches are affordable. Drop by their store, Sandy Springs, or visit LeeBrandt.com. And uh, you'll be glad you did. 404-741-1230. almost 538. And uh, let's see. I, I, Pete, just very quickly on the uh, Caitlin Clark thing. She's going to be paid. Uh, the, of course, the world's going nuts now because she just signed. She got drafted number one. She signed a contract. She's going to get a rookie contract. She'll sign a four-year de- deal, it says here, for a total like three hundred and thirty-eight grand. She'll make seventy-eight, uh, $76,000. And it'll increase each year. Uh, by the end, she'll earn $97,000. So people say, oh, my God. Yeah, well, you can't believe ninety. Well, that's what the that's what it is. But she's going to make three million in endorsements yeah. automatically. She's uh, already doing it. Yeah, and and the, by the way, the rest of them aren't going to make three million dollars in endorsements. So you know, so she better keep her mouth shut. Obviously, she knows how lucky she is. And she's they're, not they're, complaining. No, no, not at all. And I think she's pretty smart. I th- in fact, I think she's probably seems like a pretty nice kid to me. Uh, has a boyfriend and is you know hasn't done anything outrageous that I know. Of. I think she's just you know a hardworking wants to be a girl basketball player. So. Do they do they allow girls with boyfriends in the WNBA? I don't think so. I don't think that's going to be very popular. Anyway, uh, so and but so now they're saying everybody's going crazy. But she, you know, she wanted to do this. She could have been in business or law or medicine or whatever, anything she wanted. This is her major, and, and she made it work. She's going to get endorsement stuff, knowing that she's good enough to pull this off. Uh, but again, I don't. And do you have any opinion on whether or not the WNBA is now going to start suddenly gaining all kinds of audiences and uh, go uh, gangbusters and ratings? They say that now all of a sudden uh, the, the, the everything's gotten start. Are they still playing? I guess are, are, are people are selling out the stadiums now. I didn't even. I think they're I still. Know. Are they still playing? I, the the I boys are no still idea. playing, right? Aren't the guys with all the side pieces? Oh yeah, they in Atlanta the Hawks play playing. tonight. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm not really following any of those guys anymore. Uh, Five uh, thirty-nine. Kim repeating flounder. <clears throat> okay, check this out. The British government has now come up with a plan to stop people from ever smoking. There's a bill passed would make it illegal to sell tobacco products to anybody born after January 1st, 2009. So anybody born after 2009, who would therefore be, what, 18 or, uh, I would say, 29, uh, 14, (laughs) 15, 15, 15 years old. 15, oh my God. (laughs) 15, I got 15, 15, I got it. Where'd you go to school? (laughs) Thank you so much. Uh, 15 years old, will never be able to, will never be legally sold tobacco. In other words, if you are born after that day, you will never be allowed to buy tobacco. (laughs) Well, that's unconstitutional. Go- no, no, no. And they're going to change it every year. Let me get my uh, froggy on here. Uh, yeah, anybody turning 15 this year or younger will never be legally sold tobacco. You know, it's not that if you're 18 or over. It's that if you're 15 or over, you can't buy it. It's the exact reverse. Uh, and the legal age where you can buy cigarettes will be raised by one year every year until, obviously, at some point, the entire population will not be able to legally buy cigarettes. And, of course, it's the same thing you're thinking. Everybody else is thinking, no, you idiots. You're going to have a black market that's going to go nuts. The prices of things are going to go nuts. People are going to get killed to buy their cigarettes. I mean, this isn't going to work. They literally, in Britain, are going to try to make sure that nobody is legally able to buy a cigarette. It's prohibition. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Can't legally do it. Now, I wonder if there's a law against seeing somebody smoking in public. If you don't, you can't prove how they got it. Don't watch, I mean, you know, this, this whole thing's ridiculous. Now, now we're talking tobacco, not marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, tobacco. Cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, virtual signaling uh, legislation protecting adults from themselves in the future. They want to protect adults from themselves because the British government knows better about what's mm-hmm. best for you. I'm going to start smoking again, I swear to God. Every time I go into the uh, to the uh, pharmacy or into a Publix or something, I go to do something to the counter, I always look for a pack of Luckies. They don't even sell them anymore. I haven't seen a pack of Luckies in a store in years. Yeah, they sell them. Do they? You get them, get them on the internet. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't, I'm not going to do that. Well, I might. I've got, I got that one pack. $20 a pack. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, it's all right. I can't. Again, when I was in the Marines, they were $1.10 a carton. A carton. They were dime a pack. <laughs> 11 cents a pack. 
At the well, PX. You know, if, you, <laughs> if you had had those cigarettes at Hamburger Hill in Korea, you'd never won that conflict. <laughs> That's right. Hey, I was smoking four packs a day, my friend, when I was in the Marines. Four packs of Luckies a day. That's a lot of smoking. <laughs> Uh, 542. Oh, can I do this still? At this, I put the video on today of this morning. This is the anniversary of the 1964, the Ford Mustang unveiled the new Mustang on this day at the New York's World Fair in 1964. And my brother worked at the World's Fair that summer, the 1964. And I was in prep, graduated from prep school in 1964. And one of my prep school buddies, his first name is Pete, won't give his full name in case he hates me like all my other friends now do, apparently. Uh, great guy. And is a lovely bride to her high school sweetheart. She says, I love the guy in every way. And then Pete, his dad owned the company that we worked for in the summer for a couple of years for summer jobs. Anyway, so when he graduated from Hotchkiss Prep School, uh, they bought him a brand new Mustang convertible. Dark blue, navy blue with a white top and everything else. And he and Pete and I took that car and drove it to Canada. We went to Toronto and Quebec and Montreal. And in Montreal, and I put the video on Facebook and on YouTube, uh, the pictures of me and him from my uh, scrapbook my mother had made 50 years ago, whatever, standing under a light post, a lamp post in Montreal, which is where the Kimmer, we went into a bar and we were drinking. We were paying uh, like $4 a shot back in 1964 for these girls to come over to sit with us drinking. This licorice uh, uh, flavored stuff, lic- lic- I forget what they call it, uh, at Bernau or something. And I finally said to one of the girls, I said, You know, we're not going to sit here all night buying you girls drinks for next. She said, do, do, do you want the girl? And I said, Yes. Now, Pete didn't. He had no, he had a girlfriend. He had no interest. And I was a virgin and, and he didn't know anything about anything. So I said, Yes, yes, yes. So they, she led me to a thing. They, a car picked me up. A guy dropped me off at a high rise of condo. I go up to the thing. This gorgeous little hottie opens the door. And, and uh, like four minutes later, there's something going on. And I tried to kill her and she says no to kiss no to kiss <laughs> i thought crap i'd rather have made out with her than doing anything else it was a horrible experience i was embarrassed and humiliated and everything else uh and not the way i would want to in any way would want to have anything accomplished about you know becoming a man so to speak uh but that's where the no to kiss came up and it was from a 1964 mustang that drove me to montreal to uh, have that experience uh and the, the kimmer bingo card i think is in full swing here probably <laughs> You were drinking Perno, Perno. P-E-R-N-O-D, yeah. the oldest anise liqueur in France, in French Quebec. That's Perno. what it was. I think I have some. Perno. And, and back then, it was very expensive because these were girls just getting drinks. It was like going into a strip club. And they weren't strippers, but they were pretty and, and had little costumes on. But, you know, and again, <laughs> do you want the girls? Yes, but of course, yeah. may we. <laughs> <laughs> what a horror, but I tried to kiss her. No, to kiss. No, I said, oh, come on. She was beautiful. Dude. I just wanted you to kiss her. That's all I wanted. The guy would rather have kissed her for five minutes than do anything else, I swear to God. That to me is the most <laughs> intimate thing you can do with a girl you care about is to yeah. kiss her. I'm sure, I, I, truly, at your... I mean that today as much as I ever did then. The most intimate thing you can ever do and the thing I miss the most is kissing the girl that you care about. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, you should have looked at your friend uh, and said, until we meet again, yeah, and the mystery is solved. He, he, he was appalling. He, he thought I was going to get robbed and killed. And, you know, he said, Where are you, are you going to do this? I said, yeah. He said, oh, my God, I'll meet you back here. So he just waited there, and I, the guy drove me back. And like eight minutes later, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that keep, includes. Keep the tab yeah, running. Yeah, that includes cleanup time. So, you know, it wasn't exactly. A <laughs> <laughs> my God. Right, That's scoring. the total opposite. When I went with my friend. <laughs> to Tijuana, and the most beautiful Mexican woman I ever saw came up to me and was trying to lure me upstairs. They were trying to encourage me to do it. Yeah. Like, go, 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 go. Yeah. We'll wait, we'll wait. I knew they did. Well, I went to Tijuana with a famous uh, donkey axe once when I was in the Marines. But, yeah, it's a whole other story. Quarter, it's, uh, it's a 546. Give her Pete and Flounder. We don't need to talk everything. <laughs> Stream Clay Travis and Buck Sexton, Glenn Beck, Fox News, and even NASCAR on Sundays, anywhere on the Extra 106.3 app. Download the app now and get 24-7 access to the live stream, the latest news, and everything you need to know about Atlanta's only conservative talk station. Download the Extra 106.3 app for Apple or Android and check out even more great original content at thepodcastpark.com.
Convenience is defined as the state of being able to proceed with something with little effort or difficulty. Well, at RBM of Atlanta, we embody this philosophy. Meet our Mercedes-Benz pickup and delivery service. It gives you back time and money. Does your Mercedes-Benz need service? If so, we'll pick up your vehicle that's requiring service from your home or office and bring it back to our dealership for the required service. With over 100 appointments available every weekday, over 50 appointments on Saturdays, and more than 200 100 courtesy vehicles in our fleet, we're here to serve. We'll work around your schedule. We're here to save you time, energy, and money. RBM of Atlanta is a J.D. Power 2023 Diamond Dealer of Excellence for the customer sales experience and Georgia's only nine-time Mercedes-Benz Best of the Best winner. We're proud to be Atlanta's Mercedes-Benz connection since 1964. Pickup and delivery service restrictions do apply. Ask your service coordinator or service advisor for details. Tax season can be stressful, but it's also a wake-up call. It's time to think beyond April and plan for your future. At Master Plan Retirement Consultants, we're not just advisors. We're your partners in building a secure retirement. At Master Plan Retirement Consultants, we understand the challenges Georgians face. That's why we offer personalized strategies to maximize your retirement income, minimize taxes, and ensure you never outlive your assets. Join the Master Plan family and let us guide you through every financial milestone. Visit masterplanretire.com to schedule your appointment today. Master Plan Retirement Consultants, where your journey and destination are both important. Visit masterplanretire.com to schedule your complimentary consultation today. Advisory services offered through Master Plan Retirement Consultants Inc., a registered investment advisory in the state of Georgia. Insurance, tax, and commodity services offered through Frickson Associates Inc., DBA Master Plan Retirement Consultants. The aforementioned are affiliated companies. Hey, it's Lowe's. Let's talk about Howard Brothers and Kawasaki Engines. Landscapers rely on their equipment every day and need capable power, and the team at Howard Brothers and Kawasaki Engines answers. Kawasaki Engines deliver the power and performance that Howard Brothers customers demand. Whether the equipment on their trailer is an Xmark, Skag, Cub Cadet, Toro, or Walker, chances are the mowers are powered by Kawasaki Engines. The folks at Howard Brothers know power equipment better than anyone. The grass is always greener when you take care of it with Kawasaki Engines and Howard Brothers. Join a Second Chance Bail Bond CEO Daniel Madelon and host Tug Coward for the weekly radio show Back Your Blue. They will highlight special initiatives, criminal justice programs, and community events aimed at keeping our communities safer. Tune in Saturdays at 10 a.m. to learn some good news about and from the law enforcement and justice communities. Tune in on Saturdays or catch up on all past episodes wherever you get your podcasts or at thepodcastpark.com. No one plans on going to jail, but when it happens, it's important that you know who to call. Call a second chance bail bonds, where we believe everyone deserves a second chance. Whether your loved one's been arrested in Cherokee, Clayton, or any of the other metro Atlanta counties in between, a second chance bail bonds works fast to help expedite release within hours. A second chance. It's better to know us and not need us than need us and not know us. Call a second chance 24 seven at 404 bail out or online at atlbail.com. My name's Jeff Criswell. I'm running for U.S. House of Representatives, Georgia's 6th District. I'm a Republican. I'm very conservative. I'm sort of a middle-of-the-road kind of person, which I think in Georgia District 6 is really going to work to my advantage uh, because it's a very diverse district. You know, if you ask me right now, the big issue is immigration. Also, the cost of living. My goodness. The numbers are crazy. It's so much more expensive now to live, to go buy groceries, to buy gas. We've got to do something about the cost of living, and I believe that all of that is linked to the national debt, which would be my third sort of an issue here. We've got to stop spending money that we don't have. The reason I think people should vote for me is because I am brand spanking new to this business. I am going to bring a very new perspective to this. Go over to jeffcriswell.com. That's J-E-F-F Criswell, C-R-I-S-W-E-L-L.com. Hit that donate button. Help us out. By all means, we, we want to partner with you because we can win this district. This message is paid for by Jeff for Georgia 6. <laughs> Look out. It's only me. It's only the Kimber with Pete and Flounder. Sad day, 1960. This is Eddie Cochran. And old timers will know this voice and this name. Touring in Britain, 21 year old American singer Eddie Cochran was killed when. Uh, sorry. Uh, let me play this first before I talk. 
<clears throat> the summertime blues. Eddie Cochran was killed when the taxi he was riding in crashed into a lamppost in Chippenham, Wilshire, where there's a plaque commemorating the event. Songwriter Sharon Sheely and singer Gene Vincent, who was also very famous back in the 60s or early 60s, survived the crash. Cochran's current hit at the time was Three Steps to Heaven. The taxi driver who caused the crash and killed him was convicted of dangerous driving. He was uh, disqualified from driving for 50, 15 years and went to prison for six months as well. Eddie Cochran died, 21 years old. Our birthday list includes, uh, let's see, do you know Liz Fair, the singer, 57, Supernova, divorce song, yeah. Why Can't I? Liz Fair did a concert in Atlanta a few years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, she, Liz Fair is 57. Uh, let's see. Oh, a couple of crime things. Uh, this day in 1993, a federal grand jury, a federal jury, sorry, in L.A. convicted two former police officers, Stacy Kuhn and Lawrence Powell, for violating Rodney King's rights while they were wailing the crap out of him. Two other cops were found not guilty. And in 1993, hundreds of angry rap fans went nuts at California's Six Flags Magic Mountain, vandalizing and looting the place. They couldn't get a sold-out show by TLC and Paperboy. Forty people were injured in the chaos. The park announced from now on, no more rap concerts at Magic Mountain, period. <laughs> so there. God, that didn't take much. Uh, and oh, I remember Chris Tucker, the actor? 2005 in Georgia. Chris Tucker, uh, you do you know the words coming out of my mouth? Remember that famous line from the, the little Chinaman there? Uh, arrested at gunpoint after leading Georgia state troopers on a high-speed chase caught doing 109 on I-20. Chris Tucker pleaded guilty to speeding and trying to elude police, paid a $7,000 fine, and his mugshot is at the smoking gun. Uh, Chris Tucker, anyway. Uh, let's see, 554, Kimber Pete and Flounder. Uh, oh, this, this is an incredible story of a woman who wanted to uh, fake out a bank uh, and uh, it was in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Woman came, uh, comes into a bank and she's got her uncle in a wheelchair. And she goes up to the uh, counter, and she uh, has her uncle's hand in her ha- a ha- a hand in her hand, and she says, "Uncle, uncle, you're listening. You have to sign this." She wants a loan. She tried to get him to sign a loan for her name, holding his hand. You have to sign it, uncle. I can't sign it for you. So she grips his hand. A bank worker says, um, "I don't think this is legal. He doesn't really look. He looks kind of pale." And she says, "Oh, he's like that. He's like that. If you're not well, I can take you to the hospital. You want me to come back to the hospital again?" And the dead man's head is swaying back and forth. She's grabbing hold of his of his neck with her other hand from behind. She's working him like a puppet. The guy is dead. The man is dead. She brought her dead uncle into the bank to it's try like, to get it's, a It's weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> it's yeah, exactly weekend at Bernie's. Moving his head back and forth. Moving his head back and forth. It's unbelievable. Paramedics Kamala got, Harris. Paramedics got called to the scene and say, uh, uh, he's been dead for several hours. <laughs> <laughs> and she's smiling at the camera oh, like she's, you're supposed to yeah, believe her. Yeah, yeah. Well, the investigation continues. <laughs> now, he, apparently he died of natural causes. They don't think she murdered him, but still Still, she said, oh, crap, I didn't get him to the bank before I could get this loan because he's she wouldn't qualify without him. He was like a co-signer. Aww. And he died before she could get her money, <laughs> which we she would never pay back, obviously. Anyway, <laughs> poor thing. Oh, Lord. Uh, 555, right? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Uh, let's see. Uh, the North Carolina high school kid in um, uh, uh, Parkland High School in Winston Salem was uh, the teacher was wanting to use words in a sentence like the word alien, and the kid said, uh, "Oh no, I got, I got the wrong one here." And the kid said, uh, "You mean like space aliens or illegal aliens without green cards or what?" And she said, "Oh, oh my God!" One of the kids in class got so mad. One of the Latino students got so mad. This is high school in North Carolina. He wanted to fight him, and the teacher said, "Oh wait a minute, I better get the vice principal." So they got the principal down there. Everybody's investigating and. They said, well, uh, you know, that's racist. Uh, you're suspended for racism. Three days out of the school, suspension for racism. So that racism label is now in his class record. And he's an athlete and he's trying to get to scholarships and everything else. And the kid said, I wasn't speaking about Hispanics or anybody else. I was saying, what? how do you want me to use the word? What, what kind of phrase am I using the word alien in? And by the way, the law says alien. The law doesn't say illegal newcomer. It says illegal alien. The kid was quoting the law. I mean, it was it's unbelievable. And they suspended him. For asking the question about how to use that, sir. I, I, I mean, this is America. This is going on now. If you don't know it, still, if you're a parent and you don't know it, man, get to your school. Ask I was kids. Phil Collins in Genesis, not canceled back in the '80s with that video. Oh, and that's right. That, you that said song. that song was called uh, "Illegal Alien." Illegal Alien. 
It's a great song <laughs> and a great video. Oh, man. Uh, by the way, this girl wrote an article on social media saying, my boyfriend gives me a pet name I hate. He's got, They used to call each other names for fun, but he's stuck with the name Pookie Pie, and she hates it. And so she's writing this advice girl saying, what do I do? It's Pookie Pie. I hate it. It makes me want to throw up. And I and he well, he thinks it's funny. Da, da, da. And, she, and the girl says, well, how about just telling him you don't like it and making it? Uh, I got a better idea. Uh, every time he calls you Pookie Pie, call him Teeny Weenie. And tell him every time he calls you that in public, you're calling him teeny. Without, okay, thank you, teeny weenie, and everything else. And then finally, he'll get the point. Stand up for yourself. What's the matter with you? Come on, girls. Anyway, 558. Oh, my, 557 a little bit here, too. Um, and, uh, oh, that whistleblower for NPR? Well, he's quit. They, uh, they suspended him, and then he released a statement today saying, I can't do this. I, I, they, they've just proved that they're exactly what I said they were. I still love the institution. I don't, I don't support defunding them. But everybody else should, because if this had been started, if NBR had originally been a conservative talk link, public radio and television link, I guarantee that the left would have said, well, we don't want them to get their money, and they would have defunded them if they had been conservative. But since they're liberal, they don't want them defunded, which again proves that every single time there's an issue like this, they're phonies and hypocrites and doing exactly the opposite. But first, Flounder 558, what do you think? My favorite thing that ever happened in my special ed class was one time they took us on a field trip. And with other field trips, I'm sure you all remember, it was like, hey, in two months, we're going to a museum. But the special ed field trip, they just walked in one morning like, hey, you're going on a field trip right now. <laughs> Everyone get on the bus. It's the bus you're picturing. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and we were like, where are you taking You know that question kids ask, where are you taking us? <laughs> and they were like, I, was, I grew up just north of the city. And they were like, yeah, we're going to take a train downtown. And then we're going to take another train back. That was the whole pitch. <laughs> you guys are like, wow, that's a pretty underwhelming field trip. But to a room full of autistic teenage boys, we were like, did you say f***ing trains? <laughs> <laughs> we're all aboard, okay? <laughs> if you don't get the joke, autistic kids love trains. It's a huge part of our culture. And... <laughs> Here's how much autistic kids like trains. My friend David, who's very wealthy now, his life rocks, you're allowed to laugh at this story. Uh, when they said, hey, we're taking a train downtown and another train back, David from the back of the classroom just went, the next train leaves at 1117. <laughs> Oh my God! Are we supposed to be laughing? I'm not sure we're it's supposed comedy, to. Be it's comedy. I guess it's comedy. There that's, you are. It's about time America stands up for funny people. Damn it! Uh, almost six o'clock. Holy crap! The camera. I gotta go. You're killing me. Boys, Flounder and Pete Davis tomorrow. We do it all over again with Neil Bortz and uh, uh, Shannon Burke too. Thursday time. Look out. W292EV Marietta, a Dickey Broadcasting Station, locally owned and heard throughout Georgia on the Extra app.